Hey guys, welcome to a, another uh, Ron Henry live stream. It's a great time. And I'm looking forward to hanging out with you guys just this weekend. Uh, you know, I've got some good questions that I've got to answer from last week. I've done some research and uh, it's, it should be a great time. So this really is all about you guys. You know, make sure you feel free to ask any questions you have about your lawn care program, any, any challenges you're having, any issues you're having, anything that you want to talk about. Uh, literally, this is all about you. Uh, a few housekeeping things as far as if you want to find an easy guide for getting your lawn in better shape, right there above my head right here, uh, ron-henry.com forward slash golf dash course dash lawn. That is a, uh, a website that I have at my blog where I've gotten, I've got a lot of common lawn care questions already answered there for you. If you ever have anything else, if, that, if that's not working and you can't, you're also not getting your answers from the YouTube channel, also feel free to drop me an email sometime. That is my email address, ron at ron-henry.com. So literally this is all about you guys. Uh, I, I'm just gonna look, look in the chat and see what questions you guys have and as well as I'll go over, uh, answer a few questions from last week that again, I put some research into. So let's see who we got in the chat today. Ned's in. I think Ned wins the prizes being first guy in. Ned was uh, Ned was in here a few minutes before the live stream actually started. We got uh, the one and only Mr. X, Mr. Y, Mr. Uh, I am trying to kill my Bermuda grass, which you know I, I totally get. That's your, that's your thing. And then we have Mauro Marcello, uh, looking good, man. And then uh, the, we already have a question here from let's see, what we have from one only Mr. Mr. X. Uh, where can you find golf grass and sawgrass? I'm not sure what sawgrass is. Um, uh, golf grass, it depends on what kind of golf grass you're talking about. It could be, I mean, Bermuda is technically a, a, a grass you could put on, on a golf course. Rye is a, is a fairly common uh, grass for golf courses. So it just depends on what you're talking about. I guess uh, throw some more context in the chat there so I can know exactly uh, uh, what you're, you're, you're looking for. Let's see, he follows a follow-up question. He says, are ladybugs good for grass? That's a good question. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. I, I know, I believe they, they damage uh, plants. So if you have them like in your garden, I think they'll, they'll eat leaves of uh, plants or shrubs. So I imagine they, they could be also do the same thing to grass. Although I've never really seen any ladybugs when I'm out mowing my lawn. So I, I'm gonna probably bias towards no, but you know, I'm sure someone will chime in and, uh, and correct me. So a couple questions that we had last week. One question that a viewer had was around getting rid of moles in uh, their lawn. Lou, what's up, man? How's it going? Thanks for uh, thanks for taking some time to to chime in tonight, man. It's uh, it's good to have you aboard again for another uh, few hours of, of the craziness of the madness. But yeah, so um, a viewer last week was asking about getting rid of moles in in their lawn, and I told them I would research a product that they could use for doing that. Uh, the, the thing is, the research that, that I came back with was, while there are um, products that you can use to kill moles, um, but like, for example, one I'll link here is a product called Tomcat Mole Killer. It's, it's really, really well, uh, well reviewed, like it works really well. Probably the best way to get rid of moles long-term is to uh, eliminate their food source. So moles, if you look at the um, this, this product, actually I'll link it down here for you guys. So for those of you that are interested in that, I'm not sure which one of you guys asked it, but it's there right right now so tomcat mole killer um for those of you guys who are interested that's the product you can use but the thing is a, a better approach in my mind is to limit the food source and if you look at like that um that mole killer the one thing about it is that it looks like grub worms like it's designed to look like grub worms because that's what moles uh, often eat so if you get rid of the grub worms uh, in many ways you're going to reduce the mole population you're gonna, or you're going to make them move on to somewhere else because they're not gonna, they're not going to have their food source so it really by targeting the grubs instead of targeting the, the moles themselves, you're doing two things. One, grub worms can wreak absolute havoc on your lawn. So you don't want them in your lawn anyway. Uh, and it's, a, it's, in my opinion, a more efficient way to get rid of, um, of moles. So for whoever had that question, uh, you know, there's, a, there's your response. Uh, let's see. Um, Moro Marcillo asked a question. Uh, it's, a, it's a great question here. He says... What's a good height of cut to leave Bermuda into dormancy? So here's the thing, Moro. I, I think if you look into that, you're gonna get tons of different uh, answers to that question. I can tell you what I've done, and I, I think I've gotten pretty good results with it, is I haven't really changed anything. So I, I've been cutting my lawn at 0.70 inches for uh, most of the season. I, I, once we got past um, 
July, into early July is when I went to 0 0.70. I started at 0 0.5, but I moved it to 0 0.70. And once I did that, I've been maintaining that height of cut throughout uh, the entire growing season. So, And that's what I'm going to do into dormancy. Um, if you guys have been watching the content, you guys know that the the lawn has is, is still pretty green. I mean, it's definitely not growing as vigorously because two things. One, I've uh, recently put uh, my last PGR app of the year down a couple weeks ago. And then the weather's cooling off here in Georgia, which is also going to slow down growth, right? So uh, between those two things, Bermuda is definitely starting to slow down. But um, but it's and my, on my line anyway, I'm not quite uh, going into dormancy uh, just yet. So m my recommendation, I mean, unless you have a real reason to change it, just keep cutting your lawn until until um, dormancy really hits and just leave it alone. I mean, you can if you want to raise your height of cut up a little bit, I suppose you can do that. But I've I've personally never done that, and I've always gotten really good results with it. Like when the spring rolls around, I haven't had any issues whatsoever with my lawn coming out of dormancy or dealing with any kind of problems. The one the one thing um, reason I would probably bias more towards maintaining the same height of cut instead of letting the lawn grow uh, tall is because it, when you have to scalp the lawn in the spring, like if you're a person that scalps the lawn, which, which I do, it creates less of a mess for me to have to deal with. You know what I mean? So that's another reason why I tend to maintain the same height of cut till it goes in the dormancy and then you know I'll cut it once a month. Like maybe in, in December it'll get cut once, January it'll get cut once. February will get cut once and so on and so forth. So uh, so yeah, that is um, that is that is typically what I do. Uh, let's see, LG, LG in the house. What's going on, man? Thanks so much for, uh, for, uh, for chiming in. I really I really appreciate it. Let's see what else we got here. Um, so yeah, so, so thanks, for the, thanks for the question, Moro. It's a great question. And other people are, are no doubt are going to have that. So I, 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 appreciate you, uh, I appreciate you chiming in. Let's see, uh, Grace Ortiz, good vibes. Thanks, thanks for joining the, uh, the, the chat. And then uh, one only Mr. X has a question. I'm not sure if you're serious where you're asking, uh, do you use banana peels for your grass? Uh, no, no, I do not. I don't use banana peels um, on my grass. This, you said back in the day, you used to put apples on your lawn to feed it. Uh, what do you think? I mean, I guess you can. It's organic material. It's, it's not the way I would go about it. But hey, doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that it can't work, right? Definitely doesn't mean that it, it can't work. I mean, I just just not just not the uh, the the method that I would choose for feeding my lawn because it creates a big mess, right? And the thing with if you put, if you put fruit on your lawn, and I, you know, I kind of feel like I'm being trolled by this comment a little bit, but it's okay. I'll play along. I'll play along. You ask the question, I'm gonna answer it. Um, is that you're going to also invite other things that eat fruit. So like rats and probably moles probably eat, will eat fruit and other rodents. Uh, so I don't know, probably not the best idea uh, for feeding your lawn. Again, LG, let's see what we got here. Uh, Luciano Sar, just checking in. Thanks for checking in, guys. It's uh, it's good to, uh, to have you guys along here on the live stream. Let's see. So we have a question here. Luciano Sarno asked a question. When should I mow my Kentucky bluegrass low for winter? It's thriving right now. Would it make sense to start lowering the height of cut while it's growing like crazy? Um, if your goal is to have to get to get it to a lower height of cut, yeah, while it's while it's growing really strongly, it would be a great time to do it. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna take Bermuda down in, in height of cut, um, a good time to do that is like May. You know, when it's beginning when the heat's starting to come in, it's really starting to grow quickly. That's a good time to bring it down. The same thing we would apply to your cool season grass. If if you're trying to lower the height of cut just because you want it lower, then by all means. As far as lowering it for the winter, it depends on on, on how I mean how tall are we talking here? If you if you're already cutting fairly low, again, I don't see a huge reason to um, to drastically adjust the height of cut, Luciano. So if you can, chime in and let me know what height of cut you're at now and how low you're thinking of bringing it down, and I can give you a better answer. But my my initial response is going to be um, no. I, uh, I I wouldn't do, I wouldn't do that. I really wouldn't change very much. Let's see here. We have a question from Lou. Lou, I think, hails from Georgia. He says, uh, last evening I noticed two white moths on the lawn. Two? Was it three or is it two? <laughs> is it possible to have worm issues this late in October? Sure. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely possible to have um, worm issues this late. So uh, even on Alex's lawn, uh, I was uh, talking to him the other day, uh, middle of last week, 
and uh, he had some like um, like a looks like a almost like a casing for a worm on the lawn. Almost like a bird had dug it up and eaten like the worm part out and just left like I guess the skeleton or skill or whatever whatever the wrapping that the worm uh, sits in. Uh, so yeah, it's still very much a thing. It's even at this point, uh, Alex has seen some. I've not seen any in my lawn as yet, but it's it's definitely a thing that you could be you could be seeing right now. So I wouldn't you know yes. Yes is the is the answer to your question. If you're looking to get rid of that, you can use. Um, I mean, if it really bothers you and you're thinking that you may have a grub worm problem or some other some other issue, you could use um, you could use Caravan G, which is kind of not exactly the, the the thing that targets only grub worms. If you if you all you care about is grub worms and you don't really need um, a fungicide, then you could use something like an Acceloprin G. That's some that's probably a, a better product for targeting uh, just w grub worms and and getting rid of them. So, hope that helps uh Terubio Torres how's it going man thanks for uh, for chiming in on the, on the live stream I I really really appreciate it uh let's see here so what other questions we have so Ned asked a question is there a certain soil temp that is best for my final uh nitrogen application winterizer cool season blend uh turf tough uh tall fescue I think I got that right I've been working on it it's a tongue twister or is there another key I should go by? So here's the thing, Ned. Um, when it comes to, if you think about uh, fertilizers, wh whenever you, as long as the temp, the soil temp is at fit, typically about 55 degrees or higher, there's enough, there's still microbial activity going on in the lawn that's going to allow your, your, your grass to take advantage of whatever fertilizer you put down. I, as far as the winterizer goes, like the last granular that I'll put down as far as that's, that's pretty much in my case will be only nitrogen. That's probably going to be um, later in, into November. Uh, I, I think for me, it's, it's still probably a little early. If your temperatures are below where I am, you said you're a cool season uh, guy, so I'm imagining you're, you're somewhere up north. Um, if that's your case, then then yeah, sure you can put it down. Again, it's not it's not rock it's not rocket science. It's not like if you did it a week early or even you know a few weeks early. It's probably going it's going to make a material difference on how your lawn does throughout the winter and into the spring. Uh, most thing is just make sure you're uh, you put something down to uh, to continue to feed continue to feed the lawn. Let's see here. Uh, we have a question from Static Alpha. Let's see, uh, question, I'm planning doing a, a full lawn renovation next year. How do you stray around, um, around how, do you, oh, how do you spray, I think you were saying, how do you spray Roundup around plants and flower beds, any advice? Okay, so if you're doing a, a full renovation um, and you're trying to not get the, I guess, Roundup or glyphosate, whatever you can use to kill the grass down, um, you can use like a, um, a piece of cardboard. So like as you're spraying, so let's say, um, I don't have a, something to actually show you, but say you have a piece of cardboard that you walk with along the beds and, and as you're spraying, I mean, obviously you don't, you want to make sure that that's your, your wand path of the, of the product you're putting down is, is not going to overlap and use a piece of cardboard almost as, as like a trim as you're walking along to kind of catch that and block it from going into the beds. You may get like a little bit in there, but by using something as a barrier, that's going to, uh, to do a lot towards, towards keeping uh, glyphosate out of your your beds and uh, and damaging your grass. So that that is that is what I would do. It's cool, man. Going for a lawn, full lawn renovation. I'm excited to hear uh, what you're uh, what you're going for. Definitely like chime in. Let me know what you're what you're planning to do. Are you gonna kill everything off and changing grass types, or are you doing sod, or what what's what's the plan for next year? Definitely drop a note in the comments and uh, let me know. Let's see here. LG chime in and he says, Hi Ron. We know how much you love your True Cut. With that said, do you have any regrets about purchasing the Greens Master 1600? You know, this is a great segue into something I'm going to share with you guys tonight. So it might be a little early. I wanted to see if the stream, if the stream was going to get a, a little bit um, more full. But um, so here's the thing. Story time. I, I was out mowing three, three days ago, three or four days ago. And I got through the back lawn with the Greens Master. I got through the back lawn. I got through the swale area. I got through the vanity strip. It's looking as, as nice as always. And then when I got to the front lawn, I was making a few passes and all of a sudden the mower got like really, really heavy, like it got really heavy. Like uh, it's almost like um, you could almost think of like if your car is rolling down a hill, if you're driving a manual car anyway, and it pops out of gear into neutral, how the car just kind of takes off. It was kind of that kind of feeling. So at first I'm thinking, oh boy, well, this isn't good. You know, it's not supposed to do that. And I'm thinking, okay, something is something is is broken because you know uh, when I get to the bottom of the hill, when I roll the mower down, I get to the bottom of the hill. Um, when I'm engaging the traction drive, it won't. I mean, the the real spins, 
but the traction drive won't engage. The drums won't engage. So I don't have any forward propulsion going on. And this is kind of, this is a little bit of a spoiler because I'm actually posting a video on Monday to uh, like, that shows the entire process, like how I troubleshot um, it and took it all apart and everything like that. But you guys are on the live stream. This is one benefit of, of joining the live stream. You get to find out behind, some behind the scenes stuff before everybody else does. So anyway, I um, I pulled the uh, the mower, uh, I pushed the mower up the hill. Let me tell you, that mower is all of 250 pounds. It's, it's really heavy. So I get it up the hill, up the driveway, and I pull, I figure there's, there's got to be something, you know, something's broken. So I called a viewer, uh, a, a buddy of mine, the guy that actually turned me on to the Greens Master 1600, and he said, it's probably one of the belts on the side of the mower. And it's because the way the, way the, uh, the Greens Master works, you have that main drive belt that drives the drums and the, 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 the reel, but there's also two like small gearboxes with cog wheels and a belt on each side that drive in each individual drum. And because it's kind of there's like a it's like a like differential kind of going on that if one of those belts breaks, uh, you lose all propulsion. So me explaining it is good, but like video is even better. So I'm gonna show you guys. I mean, a sneak peek. What's gonna happen Monday? This is what the mower looked like. What I found once I took the mower uh, once I pulled it off. So take a look at this. So look at the look at the the savagery. Look at that. Look at that. You see what happened? The belt shredded and broke. And uh, yeah, so that is what did it, guys. That's what, what took my mower out. And I have already ordered um, a replacement belt. So, and instead of ordering one, I ordered four. So you can kind of see here, that's replacement belt. I got four of them for the Greens Master. And uh, that's one good reason about buying a mower that, uh, you know, that you can find parts for because it's a, it's a fairly common mower in Georgia. So I got the parts for it already uh, this weekend. If I can find some time, I'll take the mower apart, clean it up, and install the belt. And I'll film that so you guys can see what the entire process looks like. So I say all of that to get back to LG's question. Do I regret buying the Greens Master? No, not really. I mean, it's a mechanical device. Things break. It, it happens. I mean, it sucks that it happened. But I had the true cut. I just worked, got the true cut out, finished up the lawn, and, you know, life goes on. No big deal. Um, I do not regret buying the Greens Master. It, it, it provides an amazing level of cut. Um, and I, I credit a lot of how the lawn looks this year to that mower. So no, I don't, I don't really regret it. I don't regret it. Like any other mower that requires maintenance. So hope that uh, answers your question. All right. So let's see. What else do we uh, have here? We have a question from Donnell Burrell. Great question. He says, can I treat my soil in uh, dormancy months? Uh, the short answer is yes. It depends on what you're, what you're planning to do. So if your soil, let's say, for example, you do a soil test. And if you um, have not done a soil test, something you absolutely want to do before you start trying to make uh, large amendments to your soil. If you're looking for a soil test, you can go uh, here, uh, ron-henry.com forward slash soil dash test, soil test. Uh, and that's going to take you to the soil test from my soil. And what that's going to do is going to allow you to find out exactly what's going on in the soil, what's missing, so that whenever we fix um, the soil or whenever you're trying to, to you know, improve your soil in, in months of dormancy, you're actually applying what the soil needs, if that makes sense. Uh, so things that I would apply and things that I am planning to apply, Donnell, uh, over winter months are uh, products like uh, Carbon Pro G. I'm still going to be putting that down. As a matter of fact, if you guys have been uh, looking at my... Um, YouTube shorts, I think that's what they're called. She's shorts or stories, whatever they're called, the, the, the mobile only uh, thing that YouTube recently reduced, uh, uh, introduced. I, uh, I did one this morning because I picked up a couple bags of Carbon Pro G, which is what I'm gonna be putting down uh, this weekend. Maybe Saturday or Sunday, I'm not sure exactly what day, but it's definitely gonna go down at some point uh, this weekend. So anything like that involves um, carbon, sure, you can apply those kind of products. Um, if you are trying to fix soil pH, so if your soil pH is way out of whack, like applying lime or some sulfate, if you need to bring it down, you can do that kind of stuff. I, I would, um, you know, you can also apply nitrogen as well if you want to, to help fix, uh, to, to help amend the soil to try and get that, get that down. But you remember the grass is not really going to take advantage of it. So it's, yeah, you, you can do it. Um, but there, it's, it's probably gonna be of limited value to the, to the turf grass because it's going to be in dormancy. So the, the long short is yes, you can treat your soil during, uh, do winter months. Uh, I've done it and you get you get a good result in the spring because the point is it takes a while for you to make material changes in the health of the soil. So let's say your soil pH is way off. Like if it's if it's low and you throw and you add lime, it's not like a month later the, the levels are going to be where you need it to be. It takes a while for the one for the lime to break down for it to be absorbed into the soil and for it to begin taking effect of altering the soil pH. So 
get a soil test done, and based on what the soil test is saying, uh, treat your lawn accordingly. So hope hope that uh, hope that helps. Great question, great question. I'm sure that people had that. So great question. Thanks for asking that. Brooklyn boy chiming in. I imagine you're probably from New York. And he says, how often should I apply liquid iron? So here's the thing, it depends. If you're applying it from a standpoint of trying to get like just a green up for an event, right? To like a good example, right before uh, 4th of July uh, this year, I applied um, some liquid iron to kind of get that nice green up. Like I did about 10 days prior to 4th of July to get that really nice pop in the lawn. So if you're doing it for that purpose, like doing a light application, you can do it um, you know, whenever. But really, I, I would, um, I really wouldn't make a habit out of just doing it like just you know all the time unless unless you actually your soil tests actually show that you are deficient in it. Because iron, like anything else, like any other um, nutrient that the, that the, the turf grass needs, like you can have, you can get too much of it. So uh, I, I'd say it get a soil test done. It's going to be like the theme for this this channel and and for this live stream. Get a soil test done, and based on what the soil test is saying. Uh, then you'll know how, how much um, iron you need if you're trying to amend the soil. But if you're, again, you got, you got a party coming and you want, you're having company over and you want to get the lawn looking nice, feel free to, to do an a, a, um, iron application to get the lawn looking its absolute best. You know, so yeah, so hopefully that helps, helps answer your question. Josh, what's going on, man? Thanks for, uh, thanks for checking in. So Luciano, so you're at 3.5 inches. Um, how low were you trying to go bring it down? Oh, down to 2.5. You can probably do that. That's probably, that's kind of probably going to be fine. I know th there's a lot of people that, that run, uh, Kentucky bluegrass a lot lower than that. So going from like 3.5 to 2.5, that, that shouldn't be a problem at all. I, I would do that. I would do that. That shouldn't be a problem at, at all. Let's see. Question here. Um, Super Tech says, what product would you recommend to take care of grub worms and, grubs and not harm the worms? Uh, okay, so, um, so, so a product that targets grub worms, a good product for that, uh, that targets lawn pests of worms of that, of that type. If you don't need a fungicide, there's a product um, from Syngenta called um, Acceloprin G. It's in a granular. There's two versions of it. There's, well, there's a version that's liquid, that's, in, that's very, very expensive. And there is um, a granular of it that, again, obviously doesn't go as far, but granted that you're not going to be applying it all the time, it's a little bit cheaper. So let me get a link here for you. And I will, I think I dug that up. Yeah. So um, this is what you'd want here Acceloprin G um, Super Taste. So yeah. So here, this, 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 uh, this is what you're after. I will do that. So there you go. So apply that. That's going to take care of grubs and other and other lawn pest things that will do harm to your lawn, but uh, but shouldn't destroy or kill uh, a lot of the the helpful um, you know creepy crawlies within uh, within your lawn. So hope that helps. Let's see what else we have. Um, let's see. Uh, Wayne Wayne has a question here. He says, Ron, what about purely uh, organic? Uh, or Ringer Organic. Have you used it instead of Milo? No, I've not. I've not used uh, either of those products. I've heard really good things about them, though. Like especially, I think it's Ringer. I've heard I've heard uh, good stuff about Ringer um, as an organic uh, fertilizer, but I've just I've just never used it. So um, no, I can't I can't comment on that. I imagine they're probably going to be fine, but I've never used either one of them to be able to uh, to comment uh, intelligently on whether I like them or not. But I, again, they, they still sell the stuff, so so people are buying it. So I'm sure it'd be it'd be fine to use in your lawn. All right, we have a follow-up question here with from Lou. He says, uh, hey, I'd like to play around with a little, uh, a little and cut out a putting green. I was thinking of overseeing that section with annual ryegrass so it's green during the winter and mow it at quarter of an inch. Thoughts? I think it's fun. I think you should go for it, man. I think it'd be a cool project. As long as you're good with mowing during uh, winter months when the when it's cooler, absolutely, absolutely go for it. There's no reason to not, um, you know, to not, uh, you know, have fun with your with your lawn, man. I mean, a putting green I think would be a lot of, would be a lot of fun. Now, with those, if you if your plan is to actually be able to putt on it to uh, use it as a putting green, you're gonna have to uh, mow fairly frequently. So you you're you're um, Mowing requirements for a putting green are higher than that for your the rest of your lawn. So just something you got to keep in mind. Realize that you're committing to something here, uh, and a lot of that is mowing in cold weather. So if you're good with that, go for it. And definitely if you do it, let me know. Send me pictures. Uh, there's, here's my email address. Send me pictures and let me know how it um, how it comes out. Ron at ron henrycom Lou. So if if you want, I mean you don't have to share if you don't want to, but I'd like to see how your how your project goes. It should sounds like it'd be a uh, sounds like it'd be a fun time. 
Let's see. So we have a follow-up question here from um, Donnell Burrell. I think he followed up. Uh, hello from Alabama. Roll top. I'm not going to say that. Not, nice try. I'm not going to say that. Go dogs. Uh, he has a question. He says, can I treat my soil for deficiencies in dormant months? Yes. So it's kind of a follow-up. Yes. I think I've already answered this question. You can, you can. No, uh, no problem at all with, with doing that. So if you have any other questions, feel free to drop me an email and I will uh, do my best to help you out in any way that I can. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Static alpha. I am, uh, I'm enjoying, I enjoy answering your, uh, you guys questions. Let's see his question. Uh, Alan follows up. He says a, a creeping bent grass is creeping bent, a cool season grass. I don't know. I don't, I don't believe so. That's a good question. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure on that. If, um, if creeping bent is considered a cool season grass. See, I don't, again, I don't have cool season grass lawn, so I am, I'm not a cool season expert at all, but I'm sure Alan will, or one of the other uh, cool season guys will um, chime in here. Alan, no problem, man. Thanks for uh, checking in. You know, happy wife, happy life. You want to take, she wants to go to Costco, take her to Costco. Definitely, definitely. So let's see what else we have. Uh, so around the house with Pat, very official name. He has a question. He says, I have an established Kentucky bluegrass lawn. I just overseeded with perennial ryegrass. Uh, any thoughts on that? I don't, I mean, I think, I think it should work fine. I mean, here's the thing. A lot of the blends that you get, like if you go to Home Depot and you get like their cool season or their, their shade tolerant uh, blend, a lot of those cool season blends have a combination of Kentucky bluegrass and rye in it. So, I mean, that's, those are two grass types that uh, get along fairly well. So yeah, I don't see any, any problems with doing that. I guess, uh, is, is the reason why you're putting the perennial rye down if you're gonna oversee with it, is this to try and thicken up the lawn? Is that the goal? Uh, so, uh, you know, but yeah, to answer your question, no issues whatsoever with doing that. The two grass types are compatible. See, this is a good question because like overseeding a cool season grass with another cool season grass, especially ones that are similar somewhat in texture, uh, like that's, that's always a good plan. Uh, a big reason why I am not a fan of overseeding Bermuda with a cool season grass, like an annual rye even, is that like it looks, the two grasses look very different. Um, and whenever one is going into dormancy, the other is starting to thrive. And when the other one is trying to come out of dormancy, the perennial or the annual rye is not going to die off like instantly. So you, then you're fighting with two different grass types during the spring. So two cool season grasses, sure, great overseed you know have fun um but i am not a huge fan of of mixing like a warm season a cool season people do it they have great results with it uh but not me just because i don't want it to look like uh you know crappy in the spring and also truth be the matter is i don't want to mow in winter months because i don't like cold weather so uh there is that let's see looking for more uh, questions here uh let's see let's see um, some, some people are chiming in. Hey, Ray Amiord, thanks for checking in, man. Looking forward to, uh, thanks for, for, for joining the chat. I really, uh, really appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Um, LG said, um, oh, this is a great question. So good, LG, great, great point. Uh, this is a, something I want to speak to as well. So LG says, it says, in that video you posted this morning, it appears that Miramichi Green is your primary source of nitrogen, 9%. Does this product satisfy your, your nitrogen needs? No, it does not. So again, so this, that video, and in many ways, I, I should have, um, done a better job explaining what the goal of that video was. So the Frankie Kenneth, who's a, um, a, a viewer that's been with the channel for a while and always has really good comments. When I was talking in, in one uh, video about carbon products, he said, yeah, you know, you're always talking about the price of these products and they're expensive. You should do a price breakdown and show like what it costs to apply them per thousand. So that is why the, if you look at that video, really like everything that I listed is pretty much all carbon based um, with the exception of the micronutrient and the PGR. So what I was trying to help people to appreciate in that video is that um, when you go into a store and you see the price of like, you know, Carbon Pro G or like the uh, uh, Miramichi Green 901C in the big two and a half gallon jug and it's north of $300. Yes, that's a lot of money. But if you actually do the calculation on the price uh, of the price per application, or the price per thousand square feet, it's really not that bad. If you guys have been following the channel, you know that for my, for my primary source of nitrogen in the lawn, I still use granular fertilizer. So I use the products from, from less, not let's go from, um, a Lebanon turf. There's two fertilizers from them that I really like. One is the Proscape, and then there's also the Country Club. And there's another fertilizer that I'm trying out that I'll probably wait till the spring that a local uh, supplier uh, hooked me up with to try out. It's called uh, Jackpot. 
Um, so I'm gonna give that a shot in the spring and see how it does. But I, I do use granulars as my primary source, source of, of nitrogen and um, potassium. The, the point of the video was to, was to really help demonstrate the pricing differences uh, or, or that, that the, the, what you pay for um, the jug of the product isn't, like the, isn't telling the entire story. And that uh, the comparison between Carbon Pro G at I think it was like $7.50 um, uh, per 1,000 uh, square feet, because if you apply it at the heavier rate, versus some of the liquid products that also contain carbon, which were around you know a dollar, two dollars, three dollars per thousand, uh, it, the, the, it just shows that the liquids, if your goal was to get carbon into your lawn, are a better value. So uh, yeah, so that, that's a great question. Um, and again, I should have done a better job qualifying um, that point in the video because really, I, again, if you look at my videos, you guys have seen. I think a video I, I put out uh, in, like in September last month, I actually talked about applying um, uh, the uh, Lebanon Turf country club fertilizer as like my my fall fertilizer for the lawn. So my primary source of nitrogen comes from granulars. You can absolutely use liquids to, to supplement that and liquids for getting um, your micronutrients. I like, and I'm a big fan of using liquids for your micronutrients and for carbon because they tend to be better value. Uh, the Carbon Pro G is an excellent product and it's and it's it's kind of an exception in the sense that uh, you're also putting that biochar into the soil which is gonna build up over time. So even if you're using a liquid, I still recommend uh, Carbon Pro G. It's just, I use it as, as the outset of the video as a reference to show the price difference between a granular um, carbon soil amendment and a liquid carbon soil amendment. So a great question, something I actually wanted to address and talk about uh, tonight. So thank you for the question because it absolutely uh, gave me a segue to clear that up. I appreciate that, LG. Always asking the good questions. I really uh, I really like it. Let's see, what else do we, uh, we have here? So Kevin D. Jones asked a question. He says, uh, thank you on the Go Dogs. Yeah, Go Dogs, man. You know, we gotta, we gotta, uh, you gotta, gotta support the local team, man. Says I would have I would have had to follow. Although I look forward to Friday live streams. What are your plans for this weekend for your golf grass nerd posse you're on? So this weekend, what I'm putting down. If you guys uh, saw the um, my YouTube story, I uh, went down this morning to um, to site one, and I got four bags of Carbon Pro G. So I'm putting that down. I've been trying to build that up in the soil. because I'm really trying to get the lawn, like get the soil in great shape so that in the spring, it's gonna be baller. It's gonna be awesome next year. And that's a product that I can apply pretty much as, as much as my wallet allows me to. So I um, you know, went down and got some of that. And while I was down, there's something else, a point I wanted to share, and it's a great, great question too, because I want to talk about this as well, is uh, so when I, I was talking about the Carbon Pro L, the liquid uh, carbon product, uh, initially when I bought that earlier this year and earlier in the season, they only sold the two and a half gallon jugs and it was north of $300. So pretty expensive for a homeowner. And because like that one two and a half gallon jug treats something like 320,000 square feet at the lower rate, it's not a great fit for people that don't have very big lawns. So what I, when I was down there, I noticed and the, the guys told me, he said, hey, uh, we just got a um, the gallon size in. So Mark, I think the gentleman's name is Mark at Site 1 in Buford. He said that we get the, the gallon jug in, which is a lot better for your typical homeowner. And the price on it is actually a lot better too. So I think that one is, I actually made a note here, was um, $135 for the gallon jug. So if you do the, the calculation on it, uh, it's not that much more expensive than, than going the two and a half gallon route and you save quite a bit of money. And for, again, for most people, it's a better fit. So hope that helps. So yes, Kevin, but this weekend, uh, some Carbon Pro G is going down the lawn. If you, do, if you wanna see uh, the evidence, check out my YouTube story and you'll see me uh, showing you guys the products in the back of the Highlander. So, uh, so yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Great, great question. Let's see, Mauro Mar uh, Marcelio, I don't know why I keep messing up your last name, and I'm so sorry about that. He says, I noticed a second mushroom on my lawn. I researched, and it may be, word I can't pronounce, Scleroderma um, polyrhizum. I tried. <laughs> I also noticed a few lawn webs, fungus from a different area. What do you recommend, sir? So for the mushrooms, I mean, you, you can go after the mushrooms themselves if, the, um, if you're seeing some webs, which could be the beginning of a dollar spot, and you want to treat uh, that, uh, a good product for that is um, the Heritage G. Let me look here. That is, uh, sorry, not the Heritage, the Headway, Headway G. So 
A product I commonly recommend is the Caravan G, which is a combination insecticide and fungicide. But if you don't need a um, insecticide, like a better product is this one. I'll actually link it here for you um, and where you can get it on Do My Own Moro. Uh, there, because that one has two active ingredients in it for killing lawn fungus, one of which uh, will also take care of dollar spot. So if you're looking for something to target dollar spot in general, uh, you know, specifically, then look into that product. That's that's a great option. Honestly, I get mushrooms in my lawn every now and then. I'll see a few here and there. It doesn't really bother me. Typically by uh, mid-morning, 10 o'clock, 10.30, they're gone. They, they shrivel up and they just kind of, they retreat. And you know it's something I've, I've always kind of had, and never they've never really posed a problem for me. But if, if it bothers you, and you're also seeing what could be the signs of dollar spot, consider um, using that product. That the Headway G it's a it's a combination fungicide. It has two active ingredients that should uh, knock out whatever you're dealing with. Okay, it's not inexpensive, but it is good. Like anything else, if it's if it's good, it's not going to be cheap, right? All right, so let's see what we have here. Uh, Edward Bonet, this is like a top dressing question. He says, I have a hill in the front of my house. What season is best to level and do I use only sand? Okay, so to be able to answer that question, Edward, I'm gonna need you to tell me what grass type you have. Do you have a warm season grass or a cool season grass? And I just saw a like there, guys. If you guys are enjoying the live stream, I know we have a smaller audience tonight. I know it's it's like, a, you know, you guys that are here, if you're appreciating it and you're enjoying it, be sure to smash that like button. It sends good vibes to the YouTube algorithm and lets, the, lets them know that you guys are enjoying it. So if you can find it in your heart to reach up there and click the like button, I'd most appreciate it. Uh, but Edward, I will answer your question. Definitely just let me know what kind of grass type you have um, and I'll tell you uh, the correct season. So I wanna, I wanna make sure I give you good info. Some good info, let's see. Uh, you skipped me, mind business, did I skip you? What was your question? Let me look here, man, let me go back, let me go back, let me go back, let me go back. Uh, let's see, oh, I found you, here we go. So you asked the question, you said, barren bug designs their seeds based on region situations. Do you have any advice on barren bug Transcon Bermuda seed. I'm gonna have to research that one, my friend. I I know nothing about um, Baron uh, Brug uh, Bermuda seed. Transcon, you say? Transcon Bermuda seed. All right. Uh, it, says, it says the seed is great for North Carolina, which is where I'm located. What are your thoughts? Here's the thing. I mean, if they're a reputable company, I, I don't I don't know that particular brand or that seed manufacturer, but if they are a reputable company um, and they you know and they're saying that the product is that seed type is good for your lawn and for your your area, uh, you could you could trust it. And here's the thing: if you want, give them a call, call them up. And, and, and just ask them, like most, what I found is that a lot of these manufacturers will talk your air off. Most of them are very, very happy to answer any questions you have about their products. So if you call them up and say, hey, listen, I'm trying to, I'm trying to decide between your seed or perhaps one from Pennington or one of, the, one of their competitors, you know, why should I pick your seed from my lawn? I just wanna make sure that I'm getting the best, I'm putting the best possible seed down on my lawn. What, you know, why, why should I go with you guys? And they'll, they'll be able to tell you what makes them uh, different um, from from their competitors, you know. So yeah, so I, I would give them a call. I'm not familiar with that. If you don't get an answer, um, uh, you know, let me know. Like, drop me an email, and I'll, I'm going to dig into it. Either way, I'll dig into it, and I will let you uh, know uh, in the next live stream when we talk about it. Okay. Let's see here. Sorry about that. I did I did not purposely intentionally skip your question. I need like a moderator because I'm like I'm like reading I'm like reading and trying to look at the camera and uh, and go back for so it's a lot it's a lot going on. Uh, let's see, Donnell Burrell comes in with, a, with another question. He says, hey, from Alabama, uh, he says, what would you recommend for your very first real mower? Ah, oh, man, such a, such a, I, like the, the weight of the world is on me with this question. It's just a, such a, a heavy question to, uh, to have to answer. He said, you have a smaller yard, and he says, let me hear you say it. Tide roll? Tide roll, I said it. Tide roll, like tide and roll. Uh... <laughs> Um, as far as your first reel mower, it depends. So if you're looking for a powered reel mower, if that's your goal, I'm gonna give you two categories. If you're going for a push reel mower, like you're trying to get your feet, dip your foot in the water and figure out what you wanna go for, uh, go with the Scott's 20 inch. That's a great push reel mower. The reason why I like that one is it's heavy and it's not gonna bounce as much on the lawn as you're pushing it against the lawn. Like some of the, some of the other reel mowers, uh, uh, the push ones anyway, tend to be a bit lighter and they when you're pushing them, they tend to bounce a little bit. And what will happen is you end up getting a wavy type cut in the lawn. The Scott's 20 inch, because it has a little bit of weight to it, does a pretty good job. 
if we're not talking about a manual push mower, like we're going, we're going big time, you're going for a power drill mower, what I would go with, the one, I can only recommend what I've used, and I am a big fan of true cut reel mowers. I've had, mine has been super reliable, actually more reliable than my Toro Greens Master, although my, the chain on my true cut did break um, in the first part of the second season when I had it, so I guess this is kind of a thing with me. But anyway, I, I would go with a true cut, and as far as a good way to get one, unless you're gonna, if you're gonna go brand new, you know, that's, that's great. Make sure you get one with the front roller option, because you're gonna want that. That's gonna make a big difference in how, uh, the kind of the quality of cut that you get. If you're going for the pre-owned route, a couple ways you can, you can look one, you can, up, you can get one, is you can check out Craigslist, you can check out OfferUp, or you can also try the Facebook Marketplace. Those three places typically have uh, a lot of people listing mowers that they're trying to sell. If you have a place in your area that also services real mowers, call them up because sometimes they'll have a mower they've gotten in that you know someone had that they that, that you know they want to get rid of or they, they just get them and they sometimes you get a really good deal on one. As a matter of fact, a good friend of mine uh, recently picked up a True Cut and they got it from a service that sharpens real mowers because they they had one for sale and they got it for like a thousand dollars. So they, he saved. Uh, the better part of like fifteen hundred dollars on a mower that's already sharpened, already been serviced, and you know it's you, you know you can uh, you can take it back to that place and get it worked on uh, if need be. Uh, as far as um, deciding, probably a more important uh, answer to your, to your question or a better answer, especially based on what's happened recently with my uh, my Greensmaster, is make sure you find out who in your area can work on the type of mower you're looking at. So even though I recommend True Cut because I mean, they're a great mower, mine's been very reliable. Make sure that in your area, before you go buy a True Cut, make sure there's someone in your area that can sharpen the reel for you, um, that, that's familiar with doing that, and they can do the service work on it unless you're planning to do it yourself. So um, those are the, the, the things I would look at. But uh, if you're going manual, Scott's, uh, if you're going uh, for a, a powered reel mower, I like True Cut, but I'm sure other people will chime in. Uh, and I, I hope that helps uh, answer your question. Congrats, man. I, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to seeing what you come up with. Definitely let me know once you get your mower. Uh, awesome, 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 awesome stuff. Let's see here. Point here from, from Russell M. He says, so his soil test showed uh, that K is, um, his uh, potassium is at 25.34. You recommended a pot a potash from Amazon. It came in a plain bag. Can you recommend the application rate? Uh, I can send you an email if you prefer. So that product, um, if from what I if, if I'm thinking with, if it's the one I'm, I'm thinking of, Russell, that one goes down at five pounds per thousand square feet. So on the bag, it's a plain. I forget the name of the company that actually, um, but it's, it's, it comes in a clear bag with like a white label on. I can see it in my mind, but I don't. I can't picture uh, what's actually written on the label. Uh, but that one, it's five pounds per thousand square feet. Um, but also, if you if you don't mind, drop me an email as well here. I guess you probably have already emailed me because I sent you recommendations for soil test results. But just to, just just to give me a freshen up, email me and I can I can check through everything and make sure that um, you got the right stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's what I'd recommend. And as far as rate, again, uh, five five pounds per thousand square feet. So uh, I hope that uh, hope that helps. Let's see. Moving on here. Let's see, Kevin Brick says, uh, Ron, thanks for the lawn, for the lawn help. You're very welcome. Um, thank you for watching the content. I really appreciate it. It, make, it gives me encouragement to keep going and making content for you guys. Curious, are you pro-liquid aeration? Keep up the good work. You know what? I've got to do some research because every week I get, this, I get this question about liquid aeration. Like there's some people, it's almost like there's two camps of like either you liquid aerate or you do the other the other aerations. So or like, like, uh, like hollow tine aeration. So... Yes, I'm a fan of um, of liquid aeration. I think it's it has had definitely has merits. I mean, so when I think of liquid aeration, I think of products kind of like this, kind of like the um, like the Biospectrum, something that contains a microbial package that is going to break down thatch and it's going to introduce microbes in your lawn. That's going to help break down thatch and break down other organic matter and kind of again open up the the uh, the soil and open up the canopy so that you know the the, the turf grass does better. Um, in my mind, and again, I'm not trying to, to like take sides here or, or form, you know, be like one camp or the other. In my mind, it's not really an either or thing. It's not should I liquid aerate or um, do like hollow tine aeration. You do both. Like they're just very different. Like liquid aeration is has merits. Uh, you know, again, anything that that introduces microbials that's going to break that's going to again break down um, organic matter in the soil is you can say it's technically like a liquid aeration type product, right? Um, but by in the spring. 
again, assuming you're dealing with a warm season grass here, by running that, that hollow tine aerator over the, the lawn, I mean, you are punching physical holes into the soil, which does a couple of things. One, it allows water to get down in there. It allows air to get down there. If you're applying a fertilizer, it allows a fertilizer to get down into the soil. It helps break up compaction better than, than a liquid aeration does. So the answer to your question is yes, but I don't think it's either or. Uh, I would do both. I would not do one in, in place of another. I, I, the only reason why I can see why anyone would, would really um, really only want to do like the liquid aeration route and not do like hollow tine. The only negative I can really say to hollow tine, in addition to giving you an incredible workout, is that if you had just free, if you've recently applied a pre emergent to your lawn, so let's say you put some money, you've put down um, like a spectacle flow or some other pre emergent, you put some kind of pre emergent on your lawn, like you are going to get less out of that pre emergent. It's, it's not going to be able to do as good a job suppressing weed uh, seed germination uh, because you've basically knocked a bunch of voids in that barrier that it forms in the soil. So that is one. I say negative, you could say, to hollow tine aeration, but the positives way outweigh that in my mind. So I would, I would absolutely um, still do it. So hopefully this helps answer your question. I don't, you know, again, I'm not taking sides. I think both have merits. I think you, I think really you should do both. I do both. You know, I do both. So yeah, absolutely. So hope, hopefully that uh, that helps answer your question, Kevin. Travis, Travis, uh, dropping in with the super chat, man. Thank you so much, Travis. I really, really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for for the support. Help support the channel. Help support. Uh, helps pay for my uh, my Carbon Pro G. So thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. And, and and I'm glad that you you found site one. Hey guys, one thing I got to tell you guys. Fun story. Not to go on a segue. When I went to the site local site one, I'm not sure which one of you guys have been going to site one. But when I was there, they were complimenting you guys. They were saying, you know what, Ron, you have a pretty good following. And the one thing with your viewers, when they come in, they ask questions. You can tell they come in, they really want to learn. They don't want to just come in and just buy a product and just be told, you know, what application rate should I use, and just and just and just walk out and say this is going to fix all my problems. They actually ask questions because they want to understand what they're going to do, what, what the product does, what it's going to do to their lawn, and how you know just the benefits of it. So uh, I, I can tell you that. That site, like the the site run rep that I spoke to today, had only good things to say about you guys that have been going to site ones and you know buying products. So definitely keep it up, and I am glad that you know I'm being able to play a small part in helping you guys get your lawns uh, better. So just wanted to you know when there's when there's good uh, news, good compliments, I always got to pass that on, right? Let's see, DJ Kid, you stopping by quickly? Got to go to uh, work. Be safe, man, out there. Awesome. Okay, cool season grass. So let me get back to Edward's uh, question. So Edward asked a question about uh, the time. I think it was when you went to a top dress, went to apply sand to your lawn for a cool season grass. Okay, so for you, right now is like game time, right? So cool season grass is really starting to take off right now. So now would be the time to do it. So again, for, for a warm season grass, you would do it in, uh, whenever the grass is actively growing. So May, June is like a good time in Georgia. Uh, depending on where you are, I'm assuming since you have a cool season lawn that your grass is starting to grow, it's starting to grow pretty vigorously. So now would be a good time to do it because adding, um, doing top dressing to your lawn, like putting sand on the, on the, on the lawn is stressful to the grass. So you want to do it at a time when the grass is, is growing vigorously so it recovers faster. So you don't have an unsightly lawn. And in your case where you, I think you said you, you're dealing with a slope, um, the grass growing through it faster is going to help that grass hold on to, the, to that sand so it doesn't run off. As far as the other question you had about um, should you do uh, sand? I, that, that is what I would go with. For a slope, I, I've done both. I've tried both river sand, uh, just 100% river sand, and I've tried a sand soil mix, and I got better results from a leveling standpoint from the sands, from just the uh, the 100% river sand. So that's something to keep in mind if you are uh, if you can swing it, absolutely go for that. And here's the thing: if you're trying, if you're really trying to go the baller route, like if you are, if you're still looking to put organic material in your into your soil, uh, one thing I found out today, and I, I, I should have written his name down. I got to give him credit. Uh, but I forget, I forget, a viewer today turned me on and told me that Site One also makes Carbon Pro G available like in uh, 2,000 pounds. So you can buy like like a ton of the stuff if you want, right? Uh, it's it, the price savings isn't that much. Like it's you save about a hundred. Well, it is some. It's some. It's something. You save one hundred and twenty dollars by buying it in that bulk. And according to what they they told me is that the way it comes. You know those big nylon bags that sand drops in. Hey guys, Josh, thank you so much for the uh, the sticker and Static Alpha. Thank you for the super chat, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for uh, for chiming in and uh, supporting the channel. Thank you. Thanks again. But yes, uh, Edward. As far as your, the, as far as um, 
I was going out talking about Carbon Pro uh, G. Uh, if you if you have a big area, let's say you also wanted to add some organic material um, while also getting the benefits of the river sand, here's what I would do. Here's here is like um, what if I do another top dressing next year, what my process is going to be. Uh, for your cool season grass, I would aerate your lawn. I would get like a hollow time aerator. We're not doing liquid aeration on this one. We're going to do like, you know, good old fashioned beat up the lawn with it with the, the hollow time aerator on your lawn. So you're going to do that first. We're going to put down a fertilizer, like a starter fertilizer. You can use like a triple 10 or if you know, if you know what your soil actually needs, put down whatever you would normally put down. But the point is we try, we want to give the lawn a little spike so that it, again, we're kind of getting, getting the grass to grow a little bit faster. So we've um, aerated the lawn. We've put down our um, starter fert or our, our fert to kind of the nitrogen hit to try and get the lawn there to begin growing more vigorously. If you can, uh, that would be an awesome time to apply some Carbon Pro G because you're, you're putting in some compost, some biochar, so you're getting some carbon in the lawn, and you're also putting in some very, very rich organic material that is not going to introduce weed seeds and other nastiness into your lawn. So you, you're satisfying uh, your carbon requirement and the organic requirement. And then on top of that, I would do your sand top dressing. Like that's gonna get you a, re that's gonna get you a really, really good result with a lot, without the negatives that come from using a sand uh, topsoil mix. So it just depends. And if you and if you have a site one near you and you have like a, I don't know how big your front lawn is, but if you have a very big front lawn, uh, it, it might be worth to get the big, you know, two ton, like the two big, uh, like sandbags worth of it. If you're gonna put it all down at one time, it just depends. You save a little bit of money, um, but then there's the logistics of getting it to uh, to your house. So there's that to consider. So thanks for the question. It was a great question, um, and uh, good luck on your top dressing project. Definitely let me know how it goes. If you have any other questions, feel free to chime in. Let's see. Uh, Luciano saying that he's been a subscriber since the Fix My Ugly Lawn series, which looks great. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Luciano. I really appreciate it. Uh, have a great weekend. It's to you as well, sir. And for those of you guys that, that, that don't um, know what he's talking about, uh, there's a series that I did uh, starting, I think it was like May or June of this year, where uh, my buddy Alex, next door neighbor, uh, wanted to get his lawn into great shape. And, and you know, I'm also, I was also thinking also along the lines of, What's something that a lot of people like uh, that a lot of questions that people have around how to transform a lawn from ordinary to extraordinary and, and, and that shows the entire process that leaves nothing unshown. So that's why I figured I would I would create a series working with Alex um, and a lot tons of thanks to him because he did most of the work uh, showing what it takes to transform his lawn from a lawn that looks like most of you guys lawn to a lawn that looks uh, incredible at this point. Like you should, I should see his lawn. I still owe you guys a video update. I'll have to see if I can get with him this weekend and film a video update. But if you've not seen the Fix My Ugly Lawn series, like if you're new to the channel, uh, this is it here. That is like the full Monty, the full step through of everything that I have, uh, that we did to Brit transform his lawn to uh, an amazing golf course line. And he's, uh, he's hooked. He's done a ton of work and it, his hard work definitely has paid off. Uh, let's see. Rian Mior asked a question. He, said, he says, how often are you mowing your lawn these days? I am mowing once per week at 1.5 inches. That's about what I'm doing. I'm, I'm mowing, every, well, right now I'm not mowing at all because my belt broke. So I got to fix that. <laughs> Um, I would have mowed today had if I had already fixed my mower, but I haven't done that as yet. So right now I'm mowing every three to four days, uh, mainly because, and not because any kind of not because a lot of grass is coming off when I cut, but I just wanted to you know take the little the little edges off, you know keep it keep it looking nice, keep the stripes burned in, keep that stripe action alive and well, and also to continue to try and stimulate that growth for as long as I possibly can. So I'm I'm doing it every three or four days, uh, and really I could probably go to what you're doing mowing once a week and be just fine. Also keep in mind, Rayon. I, uh, two weeks ago, I put down my last PGR application. So the lawn is also suppressed a little bit right now. It's still in suppression. So it's not really, you know, shooting up and also it's cooler weather. So there, those are two things that are contributing to my not having to mow uh, very often, but great question. And, and, and you're right on track with only mowing, you know, once per week, uh, given these, these current soil temp the, the air temperatures and whatnot. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Moro Marsilio ch chimes in and says, McLean, McLean's are good mowers, man. You can't go wrong with a McLean. I mean, they are, I mean, any real mower, you know, is a, is a good mower. You know, I can't, you, you're not going to go wrong with one. Just make sure you get one that you can get parts for and uh, that you can get serviced, you know, in your area. That's, that's probably the, a bigger and more important question than uh, which mower. Let's see. Kenneth Palmer says, I have heard uh, to level Bermuda, my Bermuda lawn, it will make my clay soil like cement. True or false? You know what? Why, why you got to put me in a box? Why can't I expound on the answer a little bit? I just got to give you a true or false answer. Oh, I'm going to tell you this. In my situation, because that's all I can do, from my experience, the answer is false. 
I have used sand on my lawn. I've used a combination of sand. I've used actual river sand to top dress. And when I've done some like spot leveling, like I couldn't go get my hands on some river sand, I've gotten to Home Depot and gotten some bags of that, those 50 pound bags of just a play sand, like the really, really fine stuff. And I've used that to level some areas. And my lawn, happy to report, is not concrete. It's never turned into concrete. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure where that comes from. I, I, I imagine that if you got a sand type, perhaps maybe that wasn't compatible with your soil, maybe it could cause problems. But in my case, I have top dressed my lawn. I've leveled my lawn with 100% river sand. I've leveled fairly, you know, not necessarily huge sections, but probably, I don't know, 20 by 20 foot sections with just 100% play sand, which is what I don't really recommend because it's really, really fine. It doesn't, um, it doesn't really, it's not thick enough to really build up um, low areas, but I, I've done that. Uh, so I've done that and I've also done a blend. I've done a sand soil blend. And in all cases, my my lawn is still really spongy and soft and really, really good. I can take a screwdriver and I can drive it in any parts of my lawn, sinks right in, no problems whatsoever. So I'm gonna say in Ron Henry's case, uh, they that is false for me. Because this is George, I do have clay soil. In my case, I've not had a, uh, a problem with it. So hopefully that helps answer your question. Hopefully I'm not gonna get a bunch of hate mail on that. Everyone tell me why I'm wrong because I've been getting some of that lately, but uh, you know, I can only share my experience. Thanks for the question, great question. Okay, Mind Business chimes in. He has yet another question for us. He says, what do you think about using chicken feed on your lawn as an organic improvement? So here's the thing. Chicken, uh, chicken feed or chicken or, or manure. Um, chicken feed. I've never, I've never heard of that being used, but I have. I did top dress um, a buddy of mine's lawn with a a, a, a mixture that had it was um, sand and it had um, manu pig manure and uh, chicken manure in it, and it smelled like. It smelled like death. It was horrible, absolutely horrible. Uh, his lawn turned incredibly green, like like three weeks later. I mean, it was his lawn has never been that green. Uh, but um, the smell is really, really bad. I mean, so bad that when people were driving by when we were putting it down, people were like, were asking like, what's going on? Because uh, it really it stinks. Uh, that's probably not the, the same. This doesn't apply to chicken feed, but I've never I've never really heard of of using that. Uh, I guess it, I have to know what's in chicken feed. If it's if it's organic material, if it's organic and it's going to break down in a reasonable amount of time, you probably can use it. I've just never done that, so I can't say whether or not you'd get uh, good results with it. So it just depends. And I don't, I don't know what chicken feed would cost. If you're looking for a great organic product, like use Carbon Pro G, or um, maybe get some screen topsoil if you want. So those are those are. Uh, are good options as uh, as well. That's an interesting point. Chicken feed. I guess I guess if you get it really cheap, that might be a good option for uh, for feeding your lawn. One thing I will tell you, kind of before we move on to the next question here, uh, one one thing that is um, you have to be careful was if you ever use uh, like chicken or chicken manure or pig manure, like any or that, that mixed in with um, soil as a top dressing mix. Absolutely, do not pile it up on the lawn. Like when we were doing it, we would take like wheelbarrows out and then dump it out and then spread it around. And literally, even though it, it sat there for like maybe 15 minutes as we were like doing all the different spots on the lawn, when we actually spread it out, what you had was like a, a spot that was literally burned. Like it actually had already turned yellow. Like it had it been it burned from the, um, from the, 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 the manure, like the, the, how pungent it was. Hey Rayon, thank you so much for the super chat, sir. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks for the support. Thank you so much. Thanks for supporting the channel. Um, so that's one thing to, or super sticker rather. So that's one thing to keep in mind. If you are going to use um, anything like that, be careful make, and make sure you put it out nice and thin so you don't uh, burn the lawn in the process, mind business. So hopefully that helps. Uh, let's see, Travis Edwin is chiming in. He's saying that he likes his Edwin 2.1. A lot of people like those. A lot of people like those, those um, the Swordsman real mowers. I have not tried one. I have not tried one as yet. I hear good things though. I hear good things about them. Uh, let's see. Uh, we have another question from Tom K. Tom, welcome. Welcome, sir. Happy Friday. He says, do you deal with Nuts Edge and Kalinga much in your area? What do you use? So for Nuts Edge, Nuts Edge, Nuts Edge in my lawn, um, I, only, I really only get Nuts Edge in one area of my lawn, and it happens to be that swale area. Like if you look in the video that I've done, I think I had a, I did a video earlier this year where I talked about getting rid of Nuts Edge and the products I use for it. Uh, it only grows, or in my case, it tends to grow in areas where there's a lot of running water, or water tends to go by it whenever it rains. And in my case, it's that swale area between my lawn and Alex's lawn. And the products that I use, there's a couple options for, for dealing with Nuts Edge. The product that I like is a product called Image. 
Um, it is a slower working product, so you have a choice. Um, it's a slower working product that will kill nut sedge. It takes about seven to 10 days for the nut sedge to begin to dry up, shrivel up, and, and begin to die off. But the nice thing about um, the uh, Static Alpha, also thank you for the super chat, man. I didn't, I didn't miss you, thank you, appreciate it. A nice thing about the um, image is that it's not gonna damage the Bermuda. Like literally, you're gonna see very, very minor discoloring, if any at all, by using image. And if you are looking for that, I think I may have a link here. Uh, yes, I do, here you go, um, is, is this stuff here. And you can, you can also find it, you can't find it, um, if you don't wanna get it on Amazon, you can also get it at your local Home Depot. Home Depot typically always has that stuff in stock, so uh, I would get that. If you want something that's faster, so you don't wanna wait seven to 10 days, and you don't mind dealing with a little bit of discoloration, and you also have a Bermuda lawn, you have the master grass, right? So you know it's gonna, it's gonna pop up, come back really quickly. If that's the case, you get that alpha grass, uh, then you could use one of uh, the Nuts Edge Killer from Ortho. So that one's gonna work a lot faster. Uh, the Ortho comes like in a, a sprayer, like you can hook on a, on a garden hose, and it also comes in a spray bottle. That one works really quick. Like literally, you'll spray that on your lawn in the morning, and later in the afternoon, or even the, the, the following day, or by the latest the following day, you begin to see it begin to dry up. You'll see the color, you'll see the, gra the Nuts Edge um, shrivel up quite a bit. The problem that I found with it, because um, Alex and I have tried that on both of our lawns as well, is that while it works really quickly, it turns uh, the grass, the surrounding area, turns it orange temporarily. So you're looking at like, you know, if you sprayed it today, by tomorrow, you're gonna, the nut is gonna be shriveling up, and by the following day, so like by Sunday, you're gonna start seeing uh, like an orange colored Bermuda grass for a few days, and then Bermuda's gonna bounce back because it, that's what Bermuda does. Uh, but there's your two options. You can use Image, which I linked down below, or you can use the Ortho, uh, Nuts Edge Killer, both work great. Uh, they both work really quickly, and uh, that is what I would I would recommend for getting rid of Nuts Edge. But Nuts Edge is going to come back. I mean, it, it just you can't. I mean, I I've not been able to, to to permanently get rid of Nuts Edge. It, it still comes back in that particular area. You know where once we get a heavy rain, that that's something that kind of stimulates it to come out of hiding. So hope uh, hope that helps. Hope that helps. Let's see. LG says he feels that liquid aeration is worthless in heavy clay. Save your money and rent a core aerator. There you go. So again, if, if you it depends on what your goal is. If you are if your goal is to um, break down uh, like a, maybe a mild thatch buildup to begin getting more microbes and to begin like chewing chewing on all the organic material in the lawn to kind of help open it up. You know, help the, the soil and the turf breathe a little bit better. Yeah, I think there's some merits to that with liquid with aeration. But I mean, literally any product that contains, that relies on microbial activity, like, so like, again, like the, um, the Biospectrum, the one I just showed you guys, or any of the, like the Release Zero from Miramichi Green or the Release, uh, or the 901C from Miramichi Green, uh, those also contain that, um, those, those also what will help with that. So your choices, if you want um, products that I've used, that I know that, that have that, uh, the Carbon Pro G, which is has a microbial package in it, has a Biospectrum microbial package in it, um, or you can just put the Biospectrum down. That's like a liquid aeration type thing. But honestly, your best bet is to just do both. Like get a get a, a core aerator, go rent one at Home Depot. That you, I mean, I think they're they're not that much. You can get them for under well under a hundred dollars uh, for a couple of days and use that to knock voids in the lawn, like literally break up all that compaction. And then on top of that. You know, put down so your liquid aeration product if you want. You use the Biospectrum, use the Carbon Pro G. You know, do, use use one of those to kind of help augment that. But it's again, in my mind, in my opinion, it's not an either or. It's they're complementary. You know, I, I'd use I'd use both of them. So hope that helps. Uh, yeah, good, great point, LG. Uh, yeah, so I, I mean, where's liquid aeration may or may not work. Like like hollow tine aeration is definitely going to work. It's definitely going to uh, produce the result. Let's see, uh, let's see, Chris uh, Balucci times in. He says, hey, Ron, from North Carolina. I just went and purchased my first bag of Carbon Pro G. Congrats, well done, sir, well done. Many more to follow, I'm sure. Looking forward to seeing the results. I, I just need a conversion for my spreader. So there's, there's tons of conversion charts online. I don't know what kind of spreader you have. Here's the thing with Carbon Pro G. It's not, it's not like a fertilizer to, in the sense that if you put it down too heavy, you're gonna burn or damage the grass. Really what I would do if you have, um, you know, it depends, I mean, if you have, depending on how big your lawn is, so you have a, a 4,000 square foot lawn, so in which case you put down the entire bag at the heavier rate, what you can do is you can um, you know, fill up your spreader and um, begin. you're gonna have to open it up 
fairly fairly big to um, because the, the granules tend to be um, pretty big in size to get it to flow and maybe just go as, as light as possible until the, the granules are coming out and then if you still got product left just make another pass you can do that but uh, the you can get a conversion chart online that will will help you I can tell you that with um, a with my Earthway it is 23 for the heavier rate or it is 15 for the light rates. If you're going for the 4,000 um, square feet covered with a bag, uh, that's gonna set your uh, an earth weight at 23. If you're gonna go for the 8,000 square, square feet covered with a single bag of Carbon Pro G, you're gonna wanna be at 15. So if you can take those numbers, 15 or 23, and then use those, look for a conversion chart for an earth weight spreader to whatever spreader you have, that should get you in the ballpark. But again, with Carbon Pro G, it's not, you're, not, you're not gonna damage the lawn. Uh, so it's, it's not like being super uber precise isn't super important with that product. The big thing is just, just to get it down. And, and again, more for most, for most people, more is better. So hope you appreciate that. Uh, static alpha again, thank you so much for the super chat, Edward. You're very welcome. Let's see here. Let's see what other questions we have, um, around the house with Pat. He's, he chimes in. Uh, he's, he mows his Kentucky blue, blue grass one to two times a week and always have gotten to the end of December with a last mow. I love to mow. I, I hear you, man. I, I love to mow too. I just don't like to mow when it gets super cold. So that's probably also some of my um, hesitance to get out there and mow every other day. Because honestly, for a warm season grass with Bermuda, it's just not growing right now. So, but yeah, I hear you, man. I mean, if you want your grass to look good, the formula is just mow more. Like literally mowing. There's a reason why the golf greens of a golf course are some of the best looking turf out there. Um, one, they put like tons of fertilizer and tons of crazy, you know, awesome products on it. But also the big thing is that they're mowed pretty much every day. So more mowing is the formula to getting a great lawn. Okay, here we go. Great question from Moro Morcillo. He says, Ron, when you aerate, are you picking up plugs? On Alex's video, I didn't see what you did with them. I do not pick up the plugs. And again, I don't understand the... Uh, the whole thing about picking up plugs whenever you aerate the lawn. So here, here's the thing. It's almost, for me, it's almost like bagging your lawn, your clippings. So when you aerate, you punch holes in the lawn, right? You punch holes in, in, this, in, the, in the lawn. You're, you're pulling all these plugs out. What that plug is, is it's got some soil in it. It's got some grass in it. It's got tons of organic material. They may even have a little pieces of fertilizer in there because, again, you're taking it out of the soil, right? And literally, you can wait a few days and it, and it tends to break down. Or the very next time you mow it's gonna get chopped up and broken down. So I, I don't pick them up. I mean, I, I think picking up picking up plugs is a good idea for golf courses, absolutely. Golf courses do it, like do it on the greens because they can't wait for the stuff to break down. They want they want to um, reduce compaction of the soil. They want to like, you know, open it up to get air and nutrients into the soil, but they don't want to wait a long time. They want to get the playing surface going again. So for a golf green, I absolutely get it. But for your home lawn, which is basically, if you're thinking about it in golf course terms, it's like your fairway, there's not a ton of reason to do that. Literally, when you consider that a that you know a week later, they're for the most part they're gonna be broken up, or the very next time you mow, they're gonna be broken up. So I I personally do not pick up the plugs for the same reason that I don't bag my clippings. One, I mow frequently enough, and I'm sure I get a question about that at some point, but I mow so frequently enough that what comes off the grass is very, very slight that it breaks down very quickly. And the same thing is true for these plugs, they break down really, really quickly. I mean, you can look at my lawn, you can look at Alex's lawn. If you've seen the last videos, you've seen my videos, how my lawn looks like, I mean, you can pick up the plugs if you want and throw them out, but literally you're taking like organic material, taking perfectly good soil with perfectly good grass and probably some fertilizer inside those little plugs and you're taking that and you're throwing it in the trash. So basically you're throwing money away and I don't, I don't see a really good reason to do that. Plus it's extra work. It's like another step that you're doing. So I don't, I don't really, um, I've never done it and I've gotten, again, my lawn looks, uh, I, I think pretty good. So, you know, I mean, either way, here's the thing. I don't think it really matters either way. I think if you pick them up and you get rid of the plugs, you're going to be just fine. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, but, you know, don't feel like if I don't pick up the plugs after I aerate my lawn, I'm going to commit some grave, grave sin that's going to cause my lawn to never get green again. That's just simply, in my case, I've not found that to be true. Again, you know, so hopefully, uh, hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps. Let's see, uh, around the house, around the house kind of seconds my, my, uh, my finding. He says, I used chickadee doo doo once, never again. The odor was awful. My neighbor actually asked me <laughs> to never use it again. It was that bad. It's true, man. That, I mean, if stuff works, I mean, like his, like my, my buddy Lee, his lawn was incredibly green, uh, but it's, it smells horrible, man. It's just, it's nasty, nasty, nasty stuff. 
Uh, let's see. So LG adds some context to the question there about um, top dressing with sand. He says, you know, top dressing with sand will not make cement. I've not found that to be true. However, tooling sand uh, into the clay will most certainly harden the soil. If blending sand and soil together, you must use no less than 70% sand. Great point, uh, LG. Um, I didn't think about the whole tilling thing. I've, I can't see any reason why you'd really want to till your lawn. It seems like you, you're you're just kind of making it, you're kind of going backwards. Like you're making it really hard for you to get the lawn even because you have to go through the whole settling process all over again. Uh, but yeah, that, those, those are some great tips. Uh, thank you for chiming in and sharing uh, your, uh, your knowledge with us. I appreciate that. Very, very cool. Let's see, another question here. Static Alpha, back with the Arden 15 question. He says, another question, Ron. I'm putting down Arden 15 and Monaco Seed in the front and back of the house. However, the size of the house barely get any sun. <laughs> what, what is the best shade tolerant Bermuda out there? You're not going to like my answer, man. You're really not going to like it. If grass isn't, if Bermuda's not growing there now, you know, it's it's kind of unlikely you're gonna be able to get it to grow in the shade. Bermuda does not, of, of all the warm season grasses, Bermuda especially does not like shade. Uh, if you're looking for a warm season grass that will do okay in with some with the shade, a uh, zoysia is an option. But all grass, like Bermuda needs a good six to seven hours of direct sunlight uh, every day to really to really thrive and do well. So I mean, you can get it to grow, but if, if you, it'll get by with less, what you'll find is that it will thin out. It's, it'll, it won't die off, but it'll never be nice and full and thick and dense and that, that really thick carpety weave that you really want, that everyone really wants that carpet look. Like you need sunlight for it to do that. Uh, so um, R15 is a great, great grass seed. It is, it's got decent shade tolerance, but it's a Bermuda. So it's, I, I don't, I don't want, and our thing is, here's the thing, um, static alpha, R15 is expensive. So I really would not want you to go and put that stuff down on the size of your house, um, you know, expecting that it's going to grow. Cause I, I think you're going to have a problem with it. So if Bermuda is not growing there now, and we're certain that the soil is in good shape. So you've done a soil test. You've also like taken a long screwdriver. You've like probed the soil. Like there's no hard big chunk of wood or big rocks or things like that that could be impeding the grass's ability to grow well. If we've already ruled all that stuff out, uh, then that area is not getting enough sunlight and that's not a good location to, to put Bermuda down. So I would not, I wouldn't um, put that seed down in that in that space. Cause again, it's R15 is expensive, man. It's like $400 plus for a 25 pound, a 25 pound bag of the stuff. So you want to, you want to put it down in a place you have a pretty good chance of it, of it germinating. Sorry, it's probably not the answer you, that you want to hear, I'm sure, but uh, I, I don't want you to go out there and, and uh, you know, have false hope um, by, by putting that down. So great question. Uh, but you know, look into zoysia. If, if if that part of the lawn is different enough, or like it's like it's not like you're not going to see that side of the of the lawn um, along with the rest of it at the same time. Maybe doing zoysia was not a bad would be a bad uh, good choice. You know, if zoysia will grow there, because you, one thing with zoysia is that it does look different, kind of like a ryegrass. It looks different to Bermuda, like both in color and in texture. So I wouldn't want to put the zoysia right next to the Bermuda where they both can be seen really easily. You kind of want to put the zoysia in its own spot if you can help it so that you don't, you know, when you're looking at it, the lawn's not going to look kind of weird, if that makes sense. So something else to consider, but if you're really going for it in that area and you want to use a warm season grass, zoysia is one thing we could look into and we could try. Um, DJ Kid, question, where do grubs come from? Just, uh, where do grubs come from? That's a good question. That's, uh, that's a good question. I, I, I think they're like they're like larva or, or, of some kind, aren't they? Um, that's a good question. I have to look, have to look into that. I've never been asked that. A lot of products for killing them. I should know where they, where they originate, right? Uh, and you, see you just started treatment. So I guess for treatments, you're, you're saying you're putting down some kind of a grub killer. So like from Scott's, like the Grub X or... Uh, like uh, Caravan, uh, the, the Caravan G or um, the Headway, one of the one of those products that are designed to, for killing grubs. Um, oh, sorry, or Celeprin, not Headway. Headway's the fungicide. Uh, yeah, if you're doing those and you're getting good results with it, great. But yeah, I, I'll also look into that. That's a good. That's a good question. So I'm sure I'm gonna get that again. And I'm sure as I go down, someone else in the comments is gonna be able to tell me exactly where grub worms come from because I actually don't know. It's a good. It's a great question. I'll look into that. That's something for me to answer next week. Uh, Yo, says also thank you. You just bought a Honda HRX mower. Nice man. As far as rotary mowers, that's a really nice mower. Like a that's like a that's what I would consider like a prosumer type grade mower. So it's not you know it's not you're not spending money a ton of money on the really you know expensive like super heavy duty commercial grade 
uh, like rotaries, but it's definitely better than like your 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 regular you know hundred dollar mower. That's not, not never gonna you know if you're trying to adjust the he the heights on it, it's gonna like go cattywampus and you, you can't get it set right and this kind of stuff. So Honda makes a really good mower. They make really good engines. So the HRX is gonna serve you well. Great great choice. They cut really well. And when you get it now, here's the thing: if you're dealing with a rotary, you gotta sharpen that keep that blade sharp. It's a really important point. So like twi factor in that. Um, I'm not sure if you're cutting yet, but figure twice per season. You're gonna to want to get that that blade off and get it sharpened. So what I would do is have two blades. Have you have the one the mower comes with, obviously, but get a second blade and have that sharp. So you can simply swap it around uh, and then get that other one sharpened whenever you know it's convenient for you. So, congrats, man. That's a nice. That is a nice uh, lawnmower. And guys, and Cedric has a great point here. Don't forget to hit the like button, man. If you guys are in here, you're enjoying the content. You're getting some. You're enjoying hanging out, and we're getting. Our questions answered and whatnot. Definitely smash and punish that like button. It costs you nothing, it, and it sends a good signal to you too that you guys are enjoying the content, which is awesome. And uh, I really, I really do appreciate it. Also, if you are looking for getting a soil test, you're looking for a soil test for your lawn, like you're getting, we're in the fall, you want to find out the the, the, the status of your soil test, and you also, um, you know, a great place to get one is from my soil. It's from these guys. Soil test looks like this. You can get it on Amazon, or you can also get it at that link that is put up there, ron hundredcom forward slash soil test. I'll actually put a link actually in the chat so you guys can see it. That's a great way to get place to get one if you if you are looking to get your soil checked out. Also, if you like the Stripe Action T, this is like you know I have to do the shameless plug. Got to pay the bills, man. Uh, feel free to also check out the merch store again on YouTube youtube.com forward slash Ron Henry forward slash store where I have the Stripe Action t-shirt. I have the Ron Henry hats, the stickers, you know, all that, all that stuff. So you can represent in style. If you uh, like the content and like the shirt and you want to support me, feel free. Okay. On to uh, the next question. Enough with um, taking it with the, with the commercial. Let's see. Travis asked the question. He says a, a reflective question. He says, if you had to do it all over again, would you kill off all existing grass and start fresh with Arden 15 or just overseed? Ah, man, it's a good question. If I had to do it all over again, I don't, I don't know that I really want... So here's the thing. I think you will get a better result faster from killing the existing grass and putting down seed. If you're talking about the correct way to do it, the correct way to change from one grass type to another grass type, that is the, the, uh, the way to do that. The negative with overseeding is that you will see, and the thing I'm going to show you guys in the series that I'm filming, and that's why I'm doing it this fall to kind of help answer that question, the question like this, is that you are going to see some color differences while you're waiting for the Arden 15 to grow in evenly throughout the lawn. The whole idea that the Arden 15 taken over and like killing off the Triffway 419, it's not going to happen. Like Bermuda, Bermuda killing Bermuda is just not going to, it's not a thing. It's not going to happen. But what you can get is you can get the Arden 15 to grow in evenly throughout the lawn so that overall you get an even color. A more even color throughout the lawn, kind of like like Kentucky bluegrass and um, rye mix. They're two different grass types, but the two can kind of coexist and be happy together. Same thing with like Arden 15 and in my case Tiffway 419. Um, so in my case, I'd probably still overseed. I, I I probably would have done. I probably would have slit seeded. Like next year, if I overseed again, which I, which is probably the thing I'm thinking I'm going to do, is I'll probably like really go full Monty. I'll get the I'll scalp the lawn down really low, uh, and I'll see about I'm um, getting a slit seeder so that I can really make sure um, to, to to do my best to get really good even germination throughout the lawn. So it, so it depends on you. For some people, like I've spoken to um, to Frankie, I think Frankie Kenneth, the guy that actually was the impetus for the video that I filmed uh, earlier today. Uh, like I think he's a he's in his in his spare time he's like a photographer he likes he likes to shoot photos. Uh, so for someone that has like a very critical eye, like looking at two different shades of color in their lawn would absolutely drive them crazy. And while I, I get that, so so if you're the kind of person with that kind of thing drives you crazy, don't do it. And so for him, it would overseeding would probably not work well. It would drive him crazy. Um, in my case, it doesn't really bother me. Plus, it's like an experiment. Man. You guys, some of you guys call me the mad scientist. I like to see what what works and what the results are going to be. And I mean, here's the thing: worst case, worst case scenario, like if it looks horrible, like one season, I can always just kill off the grass and and then start over and put uh, R15 down. Like you never, like you, you never, there's never an expiration on killing your lawn and doing a full renovation, right? So for me, in many cases, it's I don't, it doesn't bother me as much to see the, the slight color differences. And it's a great way to also show you guys who are on the fence about it what you can expect if you decide to do what I did. So you, there's the correct answer is kill your grass and, and put seed down. But if you overseed, uh, that can work too. And for me, I don't have uh, an issue with it. 
So hopefully that helps. It's kind of a non-answer answer, but I wanted to kind of qualify my statement before just saying, yes, I would, or no, I wouldn't. I want to tell you why and where my thought process is. And I also understand the merits of people that say you shouldn't really do it because most people don't want to deal with even slight color differences in their grass. For me, it doesn't bother me. All right. Uh, Princess Cut Lawn Care. Thank you so much, man. He says, uh, he inspired you to start going live as well. That's awesome, man. Awesome, awesome. I'll, I'll look out for your live stream and uh, definitely come over and support. Uh, so for sure. Awesome, awesome. Let's see. Lawn Roaster checking in really quick. How's everyone doing tonight? We're doing awesome, Lawn Roaster. Thanks for checking in, man. I appreciate you coming in and uh, gracing us with your presence for a few moments. I really appreciate it. Let's see. Donnell Burrell asks a question about common Bermuda. Uh, he says, hey, Ron, how do you get rid of common purslane weeds out of your lawn? I believe you did a video on it. You had your kids help pull it out of your lawn all manually. I may have to do okay, so if you're talking about purslane weeds, I think what I had was spurge. Um, and so you can pull spurge, but the more efficient way to get rid of spurge, here, here's the thing with spurge. The, it's, it's very, it grows kind of viney. So if you're dealing with a lawn like mine where it's um, Bermuda, it kind of weaves itself in between it. And unless you, you, you like kind of like, a, there's like a technique to pulling spurs. You have to kind of pull it. You have to kind of pull and kind of like um, slowly get it up to where you, until you get to the point where you found where the actual, the main stalk is that's going into the ground where the root is. And if you grab from there and pull, then you'll get the root out and the, the spurge is not gonna come back in that spot. But if you pull it and you break it off, the spurge is just gonna come back all over again. The best way to get rid of spurge um, is to just use a herbicide. Like spurge is a, is a colossal pain. Uh, you can pull it, but you have to be really, really, really careful and you have to make sure you get it all out and it's just gonna come back if you don't do it right. What I ended up using was a combination of two selective herbicides, one called Dismiss and another one called Speed Zone. It's a blend, it's a blend between those two herbicides. It absolutely uh, kill the spurge, but it is going to discolor your lawn temporarily. So if you have Bermuda, not that big a deal. You're looking like at a week, week and a half of like a, yellow, a slightly yellowing to certain parts of your lawn, but it's, that's, that is the most efficient way to get rid of uh, spurge in your lawn. Another option that can work well that we did on Alex's lawn is uh, the spectricide weed stop. If you wanna go the granular route, you don't have like a backpack spray and you wanna get rid of the, um, the spurge, uh, go with that spectricide weed stop. It has both a, a pre-emergent in it and a post-emergent in it. And if you lay that down on the, on the, on the spurge, the, the trick with that product is you have to apply it when the grass or the spurge is wet. So you can either do it after watering that area or you can do it in the morning after, like when there's dew on the lawn and in that way it's gonna stick to the leaf and it's gonna kill it off in about seven to 10 days. So that's, that's a granular option that we did on Alex's lawn and we got really good results with. Like that will work well. If you wanna go that route, uh, you can use this um, for getting rid of, for, 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 for going after the spurge. That's an option, um, but just just know that it's herbicides are probably the most efficient way for getting rid of of spurge. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, and Eric, great, you guys chimed in and got the answer for me. Thank you guys so much. She's not off to look it up. Uh, grubs are beetle larvae. So there, there you go. There's your answer. So here we go. I got an answer from uh, around the house with Pat and um, LG all chiming in, and they had the answer for you. So they're beetle larvae. So beetles lay their I, knew, I thought it was a larvae of some sort. I didn't know which one it was. Um, lay their babies, and then they will eventually go munchy munch on your grass roots and destroy it. So there you go. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for the support. See, team effort, guys. <laughs> team effort. All right. So we have another question here from Edward Bonet. Hopefully I'm pronouncing your name correctly, sir. If not, I apologize. And he says, I'm in New Jersey. Two-part question. You only get one. I'm going to have to pick one to ask. You don't get two. Just one. He says, when does the grass stop growing? And how long before you see a difference when you apply liquid iron? So you're in Jersey. Okay, um, depending on your grass type, if you're dealing with a cool season grass, your grass probably, I don't know, I haven't looked at the temperature to see what the, temp what the weather's like in Jersey right now, but your, your grass should still probably be actively growing. I imagine you have a cool season grass. If you have like a warm season grass in Jersey, which I doubt, uh, it's probably already stopped growing. It's because it's probably cooler than ever than it is here. Um, it start, it, whenever um, uh, the, probably your frost, your, the frost hits, that's when the grass is, the growth is really gonna slow down in your, in your case. Um, and how long do you see the difference when you apply liquid iron? It depends. So uh, typically if you're dealing with liquid iron, uh, two to three days is when the plant is gonna absorb it, or it's gonna really take it up. And typically within, actually within two to three days is when you start seeing a green up. So I actually did a video, so I can find that for you while I'm also doing this. That's gonna be a challenge. 
um, where I did an experiment where I put down the Brent Supreme Green and I showed the results of putting down uh, a bunch of liquid iron um, on my lawn. Yeah, actually here it is right here. I will send you the link to that. Uh, that will, and it'll show you how quickly, how quickly it works, how quickly it works. So literally with, with, for a liquid iron product, a few days, um, if you're dealing with a granular, so like um, malorganite, that's going to be slow release. That one's going to be longer. It's going to be like closer to you know ten days to two weeks is what you're going to see. So if you're looking, want to see what um, results from liquid iron, check this out. You can check out this video here. That video I did earlier in the year where I did an experiment where I put down a a, a lot a heavy application of malorganite, and I went on on top of that I put down a heavy application of. Uh, the Brent Supreme Green, which has 5% iron in it. So it is like something like 7.5%, 8% iron is what I ended up putting on the lawn. And uh, yeah, it worked really, really quickly. So there you go. If you are interested, check out that video. And that will tell you, that will show you how quickly iron can begin working on your lawn. LG saying he got me one of them Stripe Action stickers on my GM 1000. Nice, man. Nice, nice. Congrats. Congrats on that. Um, I'm sure it looks sharp. I need to decorate my mowers. You know, I don't have stripe action stickers on either the True Cut or the Greens Master. I need to get I need to get another one. I have one of them. I need to get another one and stick it on both mowers. Make sure they're decorated uh, properly. So thank you for representing uh, LG. I really appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, Russell M says, "Will you be adding some dry fit shirts on the store in the future?" I, I can look into it. I mean, if you guys want, if you guys want that, I can see. So here's the thing: uh, I am not big enough yet to have like uh, to go direct to like a t-shirt manufacturer and have um, a bunch of shirts printed up. I, I'm going through Teespring, so which is like a print on demand. So when you or say you order one of these t-shirts, like a stripe action t-shirt, and that's why it takes a little bit longer, like a, a couple of weeks, to get the shirt because they actually print the shirt. They make the shirt when it's ordered. So I'll have to look and see what they have as far as options for dry fit shirts. And if they do, I'll absolutely get one. Just let me know what you're looking for, Russell. If you, if you don't mind, uh, drop me an email here and let me know, are you looking for like a stripe action, um, like a stripe action uh, dry fit shirt or something with the, like the Ron Henry logo on it? Let me know, give me some ideas. I'm, I'm open to anything. So yeah, as long as Teespring carries it, I'll, I'll get one made up and, uh, or get some made up and put them in the store. So yeah, absolutely. That's a good idea because dry fit's actually pretty fun to, uh, to do. Same here, LG Ron. Can you raffle some stickers? Um, I I should be able to do that. I can actually I can actually do that. I can do a giveaway tonight for some stickers. Now here's the thing, it's going to take me a while to get um to get the stickers. So whoever wins, what I'll, what I'll do is I will actually get them and I'll just have them shipped to your address. Um, but it's going to take a while. The, the stickers do take a, a while to get printed and sent out. As LG can probably tell you, it's not going to be like a day or two. It's going to be a little while. But if you guys want to do that, absolutely. I can do a, a, we can do a drawing tonight. We'll do like, uh, how many people we got? We got 40 something people. We'll do, um, we'll do three stickers. How about that? So make sure you guys stick around towards the end and I'll pick, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see who's sticking around at this, at this point and, I'll ask you guys a question based on something that you would have to know. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking of a good question to ask you guys, and then we'll we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what else do we have? We have uh, LG from uh, Princess Cut Long here. Love your channel, uh, Rick. Let's see what kind of question he has here. Rick with Turf Time, Turf and Time says, "Love your vids." I am in a transition uh, zone. I got a late start because I was doing a full lawn renovation. Yeah, you know, sometimes when you're doing a full lawn reno, man, it's not everything doesn't always go well. Um, I planted uh, perennial ryegrass, but I miss the mesotrine. Too late to apply it or wait till full spring. What is mesotrine? That is a good question. What is mesotrine? Is it a pre-emergent or something? Uh, it, says, it says it's a herb. It says it's some kind of a, it's a, it's a herbicide. What, what are you using um, mesotride uh, for? Is it like um, oh, it's, it's another name for for tenacity, uh, which is yeah yeah. I mean I don't I don't think so. Um, Here's the thing, if you just did a lawn renovation, uh, if you just did a lawn reno, I would be, how long has your lawn been been uh, been growing in? Like if you just got through doing that, I don't know that I would be putting down uh, heavy uh, you know, herbicides at this point. I, I would probably bias towards waiting towards the spring for any kind of herbicides. Uh, you know, the, the lawn, you just got finished doing that, you put a lot of work into it, the lawn's still growing in, I would wait till uh, it's fully established. I would, I would say you wanna give it a good six months before you go heavy with any broad uh, herbicides. If you want to do like some spot spraying, that's fine, but I wouldn't do um, 
I wouldn't broad. I wouldn't. I wouldn't hit the entire lawn with anything uh, just yet. I wouldn't. I would hate for you to do something that's going to damage uh, damage your grass. So uh, let's see here. What other questions do we have? Uh, Pez guy chimes in. He says, "Hey, Pez guy, thanks for coming in, man." He says that he had really good luck with killing uh, his nuts edge with a combination of ortho and sedge hammer for at least for this season. But yeah, it's a good point. Like sedge hammer is another product. I forgot to mention that one. The thing with nuts edge though is that it it can it consistently uh, comes back. That's the thing. It's like because it, it's there's something about it that wherever you have either standing water or wherever water passes like while the um while the lawn is growing that is where you're you're likely to to see uh nuts edge uh, coming in it's it's kind of i mean it's and you want to kind of get on it like nuts edge is one of those weeds that can get out of hand uh pretty quickly if you just kind of leave it unchecked so you know definitely put something down on it. use the ortho use if you and you, like, like you said you use ortho and sedgehammer that can work or if you want try that image out image i, I, I really like as well um but yeah nuts edge is one of those weeds that it's going to be something that comes back all the time but you also you don't want to ignore it because it can easily easily get out of hand if you um if you don't uh, if you don't you don't take care of it i've seen it i've seen it happen let's see uh, LG um, chimes in on the question about the iron. He says, if you want the iron to take effect to take it quickly, take effect quickly, add two to three ounces of ammonium sulfate per thousand to your mixture. Great advice, uh, LG. I didn't know that. So there you go. That's a good good tip on um, on getting your uh, your iron to get that that super green up a little faster. Liquid iron tends to work uh, pretty quickly. I mean, and definitely in less than a week, you're going to start seeing results. Uh, with it, so that's that's one thing with iron. The thing is with it, those the results tend to not last uh, super long. So if you're, um, you know, if you get that really deep green from liquid iron, like it, it'll, in my case, I find that it lasts a week and a half, two weeks maybe, and then it goes back to its normal green. And I say it, it, it is not like your lawn's going to not be green anymore, but that really like almost fake green, like almost like a Photoshop green that you get from like when you just put iron down, and it just starts really kicking in. Uh, that is um, that is somewhat short lived, so, which is why you know you kind of save it for you know Fourth of July or whenever you have a uh, company coming over and you want the lawn to look really really sweet. That would be uh, the way to go. Okay, Cedric asks, asks a question about like, fertilizing. He says, Ron, I live in Atlanta, Georgia, ATL, and all of the temperature is roughly in the mid to high 70s right now. Is it too late to apply some Bermuda to my lawn before complete dormancy or first frost? Maybe a triple 10. No, it's not too late at all. Again, I, I, I did like a full application of my normal fertilizer a few weeks ago. I think like three weeks ago is when I did it. It was at the end of September that I put down Country Club. So, so no, it's not too late. I mean, you, you, until the lawn goes dormant, like you want to keep feeding it. Like if you want to, like the, the the guidance for Bermuda, if you're not bagging clippings, is one pound of nitrogen per month. Now, granted, it's not growing crazy right now. It's not actively growing super super hardcore, so you could back that off a little bit. But a triple ten is really it's pretty light, so you're going to be just fine with that, and that'll that'll carry you into winter whenever you put down like you know your more nitrogen heavy bias fertilizer as your winterizer to kind of prepare the lawn. Uh, for over the winter and to, to come to green up nicely in the spring. So yeah, triple 10. Yeah, no, no, no worries. I would, uh, I wouldn't um, have any issues with, with doing that at all. Yep. So as a, as a, yeah, as a pre-emergent tenacity. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Rick. Yeah. So yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that just yet, man. I wouldn't do a pre -emer Granted, Bermuda, we would probably get away with it. Yeah, assuming that your renovation was Bermuda. I'm not sure if you told me that or not if it's Bermuda, but if it's not Bermuda, you absolutely don't want to do that. Um, because uh, yeah, just let, let the lawn grow in uh, very well. Oh, Timothy, it was you. Yes, and this is one of the questions I was going to cover tonight. So, do you refine how to get iron stains out of the cement? Yes, there's tons of products that'll do it. There's a product called uh, CLR. So, I was looking around doing research on different products that'll do um, get iron out of off the concrete. Here's the issue. Here's the problem. I couldn't find one that will remove that will remove the, the iron stains and not do some level of damage, albeit temporary, to the grass. So that so I don't know that I'd really want to. That I can really recommend um, one. CLR is one that seems to have gotten really, really good reviews, and will do a good job. But the, but the, the again, the, the research that I did on it showed that it, that it will, at a temporary level anyway, discolor your grass. It's going to cause it to turn yellow. It's going to because it's it's like you know it's a, it's a it's a poison on some level, right? It's not healthy for the for the lawn. So if you're fine with that, and or if you can figure out a way to shield that area. So like a good a good point would be instead of um, you know 
putting pressure washing with the CLR and, and getting the getting the stains out, and just letting it run, you know, indiscriminately into your turf. If you can put up some kind of a barrier, maybe get some like some heavy sandbags to kind of like help keep it or shield it away from uh, your your grass. That's an option. But CLR it would, should do the do the trick as far as getting those stains out. You can should be able to find that at Home Depot. I don't have a link to Amazon on there, but I mean you should be able to find it at Home Depot or any of your big box stores. But again, you want to keep the water, you want to keep the runoff off your grass, off of flower beds, off of anything that, that's growing in the, that's growing that you don't want uh, to be damaged, uh, albeit temporarily, by that product. So CLR is a good one, but uh, be careful with it. So yeah, awesome, 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 awesome. All right, Bear uh, asked a question. Hey, does pre-emergence stop Nuts Edge? Um, it definitely will slow it down. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, if... If the nuts edge is already growing out, no. So in other words, if you're already seeing the nuts edge growing out, you need a post emergent. You need like the ortho or the um, or the image or sedge hammer or something like that. Uh, you can use uh, if you use the right kind of pre use the right pre emergent. It can work with nuts edge as well too. Yes, but again, as long as soon as you um, if there's anything that disrupts that soil in that area. Uh, it's going to, the nuts edge is probably going to come back. Nuts edge is just, is just really tenacious, man. It's really, really hard to get rid of. Um, but yes, pre-emergent, there are pre-emergents that will work against nuts edge. So yes, to answer your question. Um, but it's going to come back because nuts edge pretty much always comes back, unfortunately. Hey, Dalai Lama's T. Uh, the, uh, yeah, glad, thanks for chiming in. I'm glad that you're, uh, you, for joining the live stream. I hope you're doing well as well too. And we have a question here from... Uh, David uh, Spivey, uh, he says, hey man, I, lo I live in Louisiana and I we have a cold front coming with the lows going to be in 54. Can I still apply my last FERT this month or is it too cold? Uh, when you say your cold front's coming, so the, the big thing is that so air temperature matters, but it's also really also soil temperature. So if, you're, if your goal is to, um, to continue to, if you're not putting that, this down as a winterizer, like you're still trying to, again, Hate the term winterizer, but if you're not if you're not putting it down as a turn as a as a fertilizer to feed the the soil over the winter and have like plenty of nitrogen ready for for a spring green up, uh, but you're looking to actually feed the soil now, then yeah, you want you want the soil temps to be at 55 degrees or higher because that's when a lot of the microbial back, um, activity in the soil tends to slow down. So you're just not going to get as much out of the fertilizer. It's not like you're not going to hurt anything. It's not like it's gonna it's gonna go to waste. You know, short of you getting like a super heavy rain and it washing out. But you're just not going to get um, a lot of benefit from it. So yeah, you you can still apply it. Um, I would if you if you can if you want to really be scientific about it, get a soil test gauge, something like one of these guys, like that. You can pick these up for like 15 bucks on Amazon. These guys are money. You stick it in the soil. It'll tell you what the, the temp is and give you an idea of you know give you an idea of what you can expect. But yeah, you, it's, it's, you're going to be fine. It's not uh, not going to um, hurt anything. Let's see, LeBron, uh, LeBron, congrats on the uh, win, NBA championship, congrats on another one. Uh, you have a question, he says, hey, if you wanted to change the type of grass in a new yard, would you rather kill off the existing grass completely and plant the new seed, or aerate and oversee the existing lawn over time? The answer is, the best answer is it depends on you. The, the correct way of changing your grass type is to kill the existing grass, rake it out, and put either put down the, the new sod for the grass type you want or seed with the new grass type you want. Like that is the result, that is the, the process that is going to yield um, the most even color um, as soon as possible. So that is, uh, that's absolutely um, probably the, like as far as guidance goes, that's the best way to go about it. If you're a person that where, where slight color differences don't bother you, and again, when I say slight color differences, I really need to qualify that because during the when the lawn is growing vigorously, like when you guys saw my lawn all all season, like it's been overseeded with Princess 77 and Arden 15, which are both uh, darker in color than the um, Tiffway 419 that is the base sod in the lawn. During the growing season, when I was showing shooting videos and showing you guys the lawn, you guys really didn't. I, I hadn't really seen any comments about saying, "Hey, the grass color looks weird or it looks splotchy or there's a big difference in color on the grass." If you look really closely, you might be able to see it a little bit. But really, it's when you get into the transition periods, like now, whenever the 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 grass is starting to go dormant, so the Bermuda, so the Tiffway 419 is falling off, like it's going dormant a little sooner, a little faster than the Arden 15 or uh, Princess 77, that's where you're gonna start seeing the color differences. So if that bothers you, if you're the kind of person where you have a really, really critical eye and where differences in color in the lawn like are gonna drive you crazy, 
absolutely, you know, you're, you're a prime candidate for a full renovation, like glyphosate the lawn, rake out the old grass, get rid of it, and um, treat the lawn and overseed. You know, yeah, that, that's, that's the best way. So if it doesn't bother you, like in my case, it doesn't really bother me. And it's also cool from an experimental standpoint. Like I like to see the results of, you know, of, of trying different things. Um, in my case, it doesn't bother me. So, and that's what I did. And, I, and I, don't, I don't really have an issue with it. Like the front lawn, if you guys look in the videos, like those update videos I've been shooting uh, weekly, the next one coming out Wednesday, I'm gonna be doing those every Wednesday until probably like late November. Uh, is that the front lawn, the swale area, and the vanity strip all look really good. Like those areas grew, have grown in fairly well as far as the Arden 15 and the Tiffway blending and playing nice together for the most part, at least to my eye currently. Uh, it's mainly in the back lawn, that spot where the tree used to be, and there's a small band that kind of runs diagonally in the lawn where I also uh, can see some color differences. So. In my mind, it's, it is working. Like the R15 is growing in, and the color is becoming more even overall. But you got to decide whether that's something you can deal with or not, man. Not everybody's going to be able to, to to deal with that. So if it doesn't bother you, the little slight color differences don't, don't bother you, then uh, overseed, then aerate and overseed. And if you want to get get your get your answer, uh, here's the thing: if you have a warm season grass like Bermuda, like you said, you have Bermuda now, right? So um, well, you didn't actually tell me you had Bermuda, but I'm assuming you have Bermuda. You can't overseed Bermuda right now anyway. It's too late in the season to do it. So what I would do is pay attention to the series, watch the series through November, and you'll be able to see week by week how Tiffway 419 changes and how Arden 15 and Princess 77 change in the same lawn. So for those of you guys that are thinking about overseeding, you can see what the result's going to be. And for those of you that are um, thinking about like just wanting to see what the color differences are between the two grasses, wait longer uh, and just we keep watching and you'll be able to get your, your question asked. You'll be able to see for yourself and make your own decision as regards which is right for you. Let's see, next question here. Great question, LeBron. Question I get pretty often. Uh, Cause a lot of people tell me that I'm super wrong for overseeding Bermuda. And I guess technically from some, pers some perspectives I am, but uh, it works, right? So it just depends on, on you. Okay, let's see. Moro chime, is chiming in. He says, can you treat um, Bermuda and Zoysia the same uh, as in total fert pounds per square feet and cut of cut? Um, I, I'm not sure. I don't believe Zoysia has quite the fertilization requirements that um, Bermuda does. I don't, I don't think Zoysia requires, requires quite as much. I mean, they're, they're pretty similar. I'll tell you. Let's see. Uh, fertilizer per month. I'll tell you real, real quick here. Uh, yeah, so actually um, Zoysia takes more. So... Bermuda takes uh, one to two, one, one to two, one to one and a half pounds of nitrogen per month um, during the growing season when it's when it's um, when it's doing its thing. Zoysia, according to this, according to the Google, takes two to four pounds. So no, you can't really treat them the same. You would not want to put down the zoysia rate of nitrogen on a Bermuda lawn, or you're going to be hating life. It's going to be growing. It's, it's too much nitrogen. If you're not using PGR, it's going to grow like crazy. Um, and uh, yeah, so no, I, I wouldn't do that. So, so, so if you went, you know, one and a half pounds, you're probably going to be okay um, for Bermuda. But I would not, I would not go super heavy with nitrogen. As far as height of cut, yeah, you can cut both of them relatively low, uh, and they'll, they'll be happy with that. I don't think Zoysia you can't take quite as little. Like Bermuda will, I won't say people say you can it'll live happily, but really once you get to like half inch, like actual height of cut of half inch. Uh, like the color just isn't as good. Again, the grass is not going to die, but it's just not going to look as good as like being at like 0.6 or 0 0.7. 0 0.70 is like a really good height for Bermuda in that the, you get a really nice color and it still looks really, really nice and cut short and has a really nice look to it. Um, as far as other treatments, differences between Zoysia and Bermuda, Ber Zoysia is a lot more, or at least the Zoysia that we have here, like your Xeon and your Emerald Zoysias, while they are a lot prettier grasses, they are not as hardy as Bermuda is as far as like from a standpoint of, of traffic and wear. So fun story, uh, uh, a buddy of mine has a zoysia lawn and we went over last year. This was like last year we were playing volleyball on his lawn. Like he had a bunch of people over, we were all playing volleyball on the lawn. And um, like it took almost, it took over a year. It wasn't until like early this season that his zoysia lawn fully recovered from that. So zoysia is not like Bermuda where you can just beat it up. You can, you know, you can play a lot of heavy sports on it. You can, you know, play soccer on it, play volleyball on it, dive on it, you know, tear it up. And, and in a week or so, it's going to be looking just fine again. Zoysia is a, it's a very pretty grass to look at, but it's not necessarily a grass that you, that you can use heavily like you can Bermuda. So that's something else to keep in mind. Um, let me see. As far as, what else can I tell you about zoysia and Bermuda? As far as if you're using PGR, 
uh, on like for my grass type, which is a TIFF 419 base, I can go up to the 0.38 ounces per thousand rate for TNX when applying that. With Zoysia, if memory serves me, you only can go up to 0.25. So there are some slight differences, not like major ones. Uh, probably nitrogen uh, application is probably the biggest one. But as far as products, uh, most product labels, you just, just read the label and you'll be able to see what the differences are. But the, the I guess the big thing I can, I can say is that products that will work well on Bermuda lawns uh, typically also will work very well on Zoysia lawns too. Just the rates just tend to be slightly different. You need to be tweaked just a little bit. Okay. Uh, Travis says, uh, let's see his question here. And before I get to Travis's question, I want to um, uh, I'll show you guys one thing too. Um, this is Travis's question, but next week, next Friday, I am going to be proctoring a black belt test at this time. So from like 6 p.m. to like 9.30 p.m., there's going to be a black belt test that I'm going to be um, putting the candidates through their paces. So I'm not going to be at the live stream, unfortunately. So you guys will have, have an option. And we can kind of weigh in on this. You guys can chime in and we can decide at the end. I can either do a live stream on Thursday, so I can do it the day before, or we can skip next week and we'll just pick it up, um, you know, uh, two weeks from now. So up to you guys. I, I'm, I'm good either way. I can uh, stream one day earlier on Thursday to answer some of the questions I got, or we can um, do it uh, again two weeks on, on Friday just to keep the same day if you guys want. So think about that, you know, chew on that while I get I answer Travis's question. So he says he has a mixture of Common and Arden 15. I want to, if I burn it off, uh, do I do it now or in the springtime? I would do it. I would do it in the springtime because, like right now, if you kill a couple things too, like like a lot of those herbicides that you're going to use, you want to apply those when the grass is actively growing. Like glyphosate, if you if you apply it whenever the lawn is about to go dormant, you're not going to get as good a result out of it um, as when the Bermuda is growing vigorously. Like it's it's going to like you, anything you put on the, on the leaf, it's going to like it's going to suck in. It's going to take up more so um, faster and so it's it's you're gonna get I would, long short is wait till the spring i would wait till the spring to kill it off if that's what you want to do that would be um that would be my suggestion that'd be my suggestion kill off kill off your grass kill off the grass in the springtime right when the grass when the bermuda is beginning to actively grow all right um let's see here uh we have a question from static alpha he says uh, that's not static alpha. This is static alpha. He says, in your experience, what is the best sand for leveling purposes? Purposes. I've heard masonry sand is the way to go. Yeah, I, I think masonry sand is good. Uh, we use what um, we call river sand, which is probably, it's kind of like the same thing. You want to use a coarser, a coarser sand. Uh, a coarser sand uh, to level your lawn. You you can use play sand, but you're gonna get a better result by using a coarser sand because it's it's bigger. Like usually the granules are bigger, so it's easier for water and 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 stuff to get through it and to get and to just to feed the soil. You're not you're not creating as much of a barrier, and it goes a lot further. So I would um I would use yeah mystery to answer your question yes mystery sand is a good choice. A lot of people use that, and around here we use river sand, which is you know basically. Uh, uh, the same thing. So we got a bunch of people on saying skip. I got one for Thursday and everyone else is saying let's take next week off and do it in two weeks. So I'm good with that. That works. I mean, it seems like that's that's a consensus and I am I am good with uh, having next week off and just picking it up next uh, next Thursday or next or, or Friday, two weeks from now. So uh, as always, I'll put out a, um, a video, like a, uh, a post to the channel and you guys know then. I may even do like a... Uh, a YouTube story to also let you guys know that it's uh, that one when it's gonna be picking back up because I know two weeks you can forget, but uh, but yeah, that that works. Let's see, uh, yeah. So Chris Bishop chimes in. He says he says, "Hey Ron, I enjoy your Friday evening get together. I am new to lawn care. Uh, awesome, awesome, Chaz. Thanks so much for um, for being uh, part of the of the series." of being part of just joining the channel and watching the content. I really appreciate it. You know, I mean, without people to watch the content, I would not have a reason to make it. So thank you for, for uh, joining. I'm glad you're getting some value out of it. Uh, let's see what else we have. Yep. So LG says the uh, live stream is a weekly tradition for life. Wife and I, as, uh, as much as I wanted to see a live stream on Thursday, it's only fair that you get one week off. Fair enough. Thank you guys. I will do that. So that, 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 that answers the question. So that will, I will take a week off, uh, next week, just, uh, just to, um, uh, you know, I'll be doing the black belt test and you guys get a week away from hearing me yap away 
and uh, we'll just pick it up in two weeks. I'm looking here for other questions, guys. It might be a shorter night tonight. Normally we go uh, two and a half hours, um, but tonight actually might be short, slower. Oh, I did get a question from a viewer that I told him I would answer on the live stream. He asked me a question around which backpack sprayer I would recommend. So when it comes to sprayers, there's really only two that I have, um, there's two that I have personal experience with, but only two that I would recommend. Um, the question that, that uh, he, the, the, of those two, there's the Chapin, which you guys have seen tons of times on the channel. And then I've also tried the, um, the Typhoon 2 from Flow Zone. Of the two, as a budget, and obviously as a budget, but as like an entry level sprayer that's honestly gonna work really, really well. It's gonna be able to put down most products very well. The Chapin is a really good sprayer. Um, that's the one I would probably go with if you're not trying to break the bank. You can pick it up for just under 200 bucks if you find it on sale. And that's the one I would go with. If you were looking for, in my mind, like one of the best sprayers that you can, that money can buy, the Flow Zone Typhoon 2 is a great option. Actually, I put links to both of them in here in case you guys are interested in it. I don't know if any of you guys are in the market for a sprayer, but uh, if, if, the, if the viewer happens to be in here, because I told him I would answer it in the chat, and if he's looking at it afterwards, I told you I'd answer your question, so I'm answering it. But those are the links to either one of those. The Chapin, if you're going to save a little bit of money. The Flow Zone, if you want the, the like a, the, probably one of the better options. And, uh, and cool. Let's see. Um, Monique chiming in. Uh, miss you tonight at dinner, Ron. Yeah, I told you. Yeah, you know why you missed me? Because I'm doing a live stream. So Monique is a good, is a good friend of mine. Uh, she's actually one of the martial artists that, uh, that's at our studio. She, she is, uh, I got a dinner invite, but I obviously couldn't make it because I had to do the live stream. So uh, there you go. Well, guys, I think we're getting towards the end. Uh, so quick question. So, so here's the question we're going to use to qualify for the giveaway. Um, I'm going to do three, st I'm going to do three stickers. Let's see. Uh, let me answer Kevin's question here. Here's a question. He says, uh, for granulars, uh, drop spreader or rotary spreader. I've only, I've only always used a rotary spreader. A drop spreader can probably work too, but I've only used a rotary broadcast spreader. So that's what I would recommend that you use. Um, yeah. And because most of the, most of the rates on the bag, uh, assume that you're using a rotary, bro a rotary broadcast spreader, not a drop spreader. So uh, that, that that can be the uh, that's the ticket. Now it depends on what you're applying. If you're applying something like like Carbon Pro G, it's not really going to matter because again you're not going to really over apply the product. But as far as being able to say that uh, setting doing a certain setting on the broadcast spreader is going to produce this much X number of coverage, that is where using the sprayer that the spreader they recommend um, at the settings they recommend is going to uh, to do a really good a good job. All right. Uh, we have another question here and he's from Dean Simister. Dean asked the question. He says, I have common Bermuda and sodded tift way, um, tift way. What can I do to make my lawn thicker next year? It looks a little thin on some places. What do you recommend? So Dean, we have to look at, um, at a, 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 the, the process to getting your lawn looking really good really comes down to, to a couple of things to two, really two things to be completely honest. You want to make sure you have good soil. So we want to make we want to get a soil test done and make sure that there's not major deficiencies in the soil. Like there's enough nitrogen in the soil, there's enough phosphorus, there's enough potassium, and that the, that your soil pH is where it needs to be. Once we get all that stuff right, getting your your lawn to grow in really well and get nice and thick, um, assuming you're getting enough sunlight as well, really comes down to frequent mowing. So if you want your lawn to look better, mow more frequently. If you're looking to get a soil test, a soil test that I would recommend is this one. It's the one from my soil. It's super easy to use. Uh, it, you can, you, you will use like a, um, a sampling tool, pick up, um, get some samples, send them in. I can actually show you what it looks like here real quick, just for ease sake. You get a cup like this, a capsule like this that has that, um, I forget what the actual, it's a, oh, the ion exchange resin. So you get a scoop that it goes in and it comes with like an envelope to mail it out and instructions for um, registering the kit online. So it's super easy to use. Get that, what I would do is I would start with that. Even right now, just get that done. Like get a soil test done and um, see where you are. And let's that way we could formulate a plan of attack for fixing the soil. As far as where to get a soil test, you can go here uh, at ronnashhenry.com uh, forward slash soil test. Uh, that is going to take you to a um, to MySoul's website 
where you can pick one of these bad boys up. Once you get that and you get, and you get the results, you're going to have to register online. Once you get the results, uh, if you want, feel free to drop me an email. Here's my email address. It's ron at ron-henry.com. Send me an email with the soil test results and I'll be able to tell you what I would do to help um, fix your soil. Oh, it looks like you're chiming in here. Uh, let's see. You say that you did a soil test. <laughs> you did a soil test and you say the nitrogen is low. Uh, but I should get a pair on the, on the screen so everyone else can see. Uh, the nitrogen is low, but the uh, P and the but the phosphorus and and uh, potassium are good. As a matter of fact, K is, is a little high. Okay, yeah. So nitrogen is one of the is one of the key uh, macronutrients that that Bermuda needs to be happy. So if it's really if, depending on how low it is, if it's super low, uh, that's something we can begin working on now. Again, your your soil is about to your soil your grass is about to go dormant. Um, assuming we're dealing with Bermuda, did you say whether you're dealing with Bermuda or not? You do. You have common Bermuda. That's what you told me. Yeah, so you can begin working on that to fix the soil now by adding that nitrogen. But you're not going to really see a lot of benefit from it until uh, springtime rolls around. So let's let's get that fixed. Uh, and you didn't mention your soil pH. So if you can let me know what your soil pH is, that would be good too, because that is uh, that that weighs very heavily into how. Um, how well the, the grass is going to grow. But yeah, we just we, once we get the nitrogen down to begin getting those levels up, once all that's done, it's really just mowing. So like mow frequently. If you want your lawn to look really good, mow more frequently. Uh, my recommendation is that you can mow your lawn at least twice a week. So twice a week is the magic number that really begins to take your lawn from like basic looking to a lot, you know, to something that really stands out uh, among the lawns in your in your area. So hopefully that helps. Uh, let's see here. Some more questions coming in. And LG, no, I don't have a side. I don't have a side job working for Site One. I wish I did. I should, right? As much business as I send their way, I should have a, a side job or some kind of deal with them. That would be nice. Maybe, maybe one day. Maybe when I get bigger, we'll see. Uh, let's see. Um, Lee Harrington says, "What does that soil test show? Oh, your CEC, your cationic uh, exchange. So, so that's not something that's actually shown on here. It's not. Um, that's not one of the things that are reported." Uh, uh, it's the, the jury's out on, on whether or not that's really super helpful for most home lawns in, in improving your soil health. I mean, the big things you really need to measure and get right are pH, macronutrients, and then if you really, once you really get those right, your micronutrients. And the soil test really provides that. It does not, they don't, do, the, the my soil test does not show CEC. Uh, so hope that uh, that helps. Let's see here. Uh, Static Alpha says, what starter fertilizer would you recommend? Sorry, that was my last question. This is it really your last question. Are you sure? Uh, it depends on um, what your soil needs. A good starter fertilizer that has a little bit of everything. Let me get here. It's one from Pennington. Uh, it's this guy. Let me get the, um, the link to it. It's a Pennington. Um, so so well, it's, it depends. I don't like to recommend starter fertilizers that contain phosphorus unless your soil needs it. So if you need uh phosphorus um then this one from anderson so you always I say i never recommend anderson's product but here's a recommendation for anderson's or an anderson product uh will work well let me see if i can find dig this link up for you if i can get it to um load up here so this guy from anderson's which has a little bit of everything it has nitrogen uh, phosphorus and um, potassium will work well static alpha uh, it's a, let me see what I have here. It's an 18, 24, 12. So if your so if your phosphorus is low, that's a great option. Um, but if you don't need that and you're just looking for, uh, a, a, fur, a starter for like, you're just looking for something that's a little heavier on nitrogen and heavier on, um, with also some potassium in it, then like a Pennington 22011 is good. You can get a triple 10. It, it, the best, the best thing really is to see what your, soil needs and then and apply that to it uh you know a, a safe and if you if you want a very safe answer like a the tr a triple 10 is something that's not going to destroy that i know is not going to do any permanent damage to your soil any of these really higher concentrations even like the one i just linked there that has uh like it's 20 percent 24 percent phosphorus like really you don't want to apply that unless you know that your soil needs phosphorus you know so if you're just looking for something to use as part of a, of, a, of a top dressing program and you don't really know what your soil is like, which you really should know before you top dress, but if you're gonna do it anyway, like a triple 10 is pretty safe. So just get on Amazon, put in like 10-10-10 uh, fertilizer and just choose uh, one of those ones that come up and, and you should be fine. 
should get good results with that. Uh, Dean, let's see, your soil pH is 7.1. That's good, man. If you get, if you're at 7.1, that's uh, that's uh, that's decent. Yeah, that's not um, that's not that's not too bad. I mean, it's a little on, a little trending a little on the higher side, but it's not. That's okay. That should work fine. If you want to use like a sulfate to bring it down a little bit, you can. But honestly, applying nitrogen, like your nitrogen is low. When you apply nitrogen to your lawn, that has it. That has a side effect of lowering pH over time. So actually I wouldn't apply any sulfate. I would just work on getting your nitrogen to where it needs to be and you'll find that pH will probably drop just slightly and settle into a nice a nice range in the sixes, which is good for Bermuda. Uh, Dean, my email address is here. I just put it up on the screen. It's ron at ron-henry.com. I'll turn it off and back on. So you look like right here, like where I'm pointing to right now, by the magic of screen annotations, it will magically appear. Ron at ron-henry.com is my email address. So feel free to drop me a line there. Send me your soil test, like take a picture of it, make sure it's a good picture of, of your soil test results. And I'll look at that and I'll be able to tell you what I would do if anything. Your soil might be in good enough shape other than the nitrogen that we just need to just put down like a, a nitrogen bias fert on it and you're good to go. So send me the results there and I will do my best to help you out. Um, let's see. <laughs> Morris is also uh, central turf irrigation. No, I don't get a kickback from any of those guys, unfortunately. All right, guys. So I think we are, um, Moro, your question. What is your question, Moro, that I missed? Let me look up here. What was your question? Oh, yes. Here we go. Um, around your sprinkler system. Do you winterize your sprinkler system? If no, would you show, if no, would you show us how to on a later video? No, I don't, win I don't winterize my sprinkler system. Uh, so I can't show you how to winterize it. So no, I don't because yeah, I, I guess you're talking about probably if um from like I guess from freezing like not leaving uh, water in the lines that preventing damage. That, I guess that could be a reason. But I, no, I've never I've never winterized my sprinkler system. I've never done anything special with it. Really, I stop I stop watering uh, long before uh, a freeze comes in. So there's really not that much water you no know, as, as you know residing in the lines that's going to freeze and crack it or cause cause damage there's plenty of there's plenty of space for extents for expansion um if that's what you're after but no i don't i don't winterize or do anything special to my sprinkler system other than turn it off uh when winter when winter time rolls in so sorry i can't be of um of more help on that one because i don't do anything special uh but yeah it'd be interesting i actually look into that i just look at what people that live up north do as far as winterizing their uh their sprinkler systems okay guys so giveaway time giveaway time we're going to do uh, a couple of um stripe action stickers tonight we'll do we got 43 people so we'll do three of them um so the question and here's the thing the question is going to run for 30 seconds and let me get my notepad out here so i can write down the names there's only 43 people so they actually have a pretty good chance of winning <laughs> lg's going to be like i never win watch what he's probably with his wife watch i never win watch it's gonna happen again all right so the question is so you guys saw that I overseeded my lawn. And again, we're going to start a 30-second uh, timer. I'm actually going to put that up here right now so you can see it's fully, fully scientific. Let me get my timer set up. 30 seconds on the clock starting once I ask the question. Okay. So the question is, I overseeded my lawn with Arden 15 this year. In previous seasons of Project Golf Course Lawn, what gra which type of grass seed did I overseed my lawn with? And your 30 seconds starts now. It's counting down. Let's see. What is the grass type that I overseed my lawn with in previous seasons? Let's see what you guys are coming through with here. Let's see. River sand. Oh, river sand morrow is not a C type. Not top dress. What did I overseed my lawn with in previous seasons of Project Golf Course Lawn? You have six seconds, five seconds, four Three, two, one, time's up. So I'm going to look here. I'm going to look on my side. I can actually look at the live stream because I'm actually, like, I am ahead of you guys. So I'm going to keep looking here and see what comes through. Tiffway419, no, that is not correct, LG. That is not correct. That is not the correct answer. Uh, someone, someone weighs in. Rye, no, not Rye. <laughs> no, it's not Rye. Dean. It's not Rye Dean. It's not Tiffway 419. Princess 77. That is correct. Princess 77 is the correct answer. Uh, Princess 77 is the correct answer. <laughs> uh, so Josh. So Travis. So uh, so Travis and Josh. Let me look here. Uh, let me make notes. So 
Travis and Josh uh, will definitely get one of the stickers because they actually got the answer uh, right. But everyone else, we are going to... We're going to still put you guys in the drawing. Even everyone that chimed in, because you guys are interacting, you're still going to get a, get a chance. Let's see here. So we got LG. We got Chris. We got Timothy Wolf. Uh, we have... Did I miss anybody? I uh, have Dean. Uh, we got Rick. We got... <laughs> LG's like, sorry, I'm a cool season guy. Well, that's your fault. We got Edward. Uh, uh, we have Robert. Okay. All right. So I think I missed. I didn't miss anybody. I've got LG. I've got uh, Moro. Okay. So Moro, Chris, Travis, LG, Rick, Robert, and Moro. All right. So. I think I have not missed anyone. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, Josh and Travis are already going to um, win one of the stickers because they actually got the answer correct. Cedric, I'll put you in the drawing as well too. And because I'm generous tonight, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give away two stickers. So um, I'm gonna give Josh and Travis, Travis you're gonna get one. And in between you guys that are left, we're gonna do two, all right? so. And we got Cedric in there. So let me get Google up. My random number generator. Uh, random number between, how many people do we have here? We've got um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we'll let nice AZ Lawn, <laughs> nice AZ Lawn in as well. Uh, AZ Lawn as well. So it's 10, all right? So you guys actually have a pretty good chance of winning. Um, between one and 10. Let's see here. So let me get this up. And okay, so I think I've gotten everyone's names. I, I, got, I got you I got you in here, Cedric. Yep, Cedric's in there too. Everyone, I think everyone that actually chimed in, you, you're gonna have a chance. All right, so let me switch over here so there's no funny business. You guys can actually see my screen. You guys can see I'm not messing you guys over. Okay, so random number between one and 10. I'm gonna hit generate and we're going, you can't, Mauro, you don't know. I haven't done it yet, man. You don't know where you are. And uh, so, um, actually, I should actually should show. I can't show you guys the actual names, but the the names are actually. I'll I'll do it like this. This way, we are completely legit. How about this? We'll go like that. Uh, that's the names in order, which that didn't print very well. But that, that's that's the listing. Okay. So between one and ten, we're gonna do our first drawing. We're gonna generate number between one and ten. Going now. The first number is number three. So the third person on the list was Timothy. Timothy Wolf, he is one of our winners. So we're gonna take uh, Timothy out, X, and we're gonna drop him down here. And <laughs> LG's gonna feel like, I never win. All right, so we're gonna change this from um, one in 10 to one in nine, okay? Because we only got nine people left. All right, are you ready? Are you ready? Here we go. Number seven. So LG's like, I can, I can see him in the living room. So we count, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So LG, Moro, Chris, Dean, Edward, Robert. Moro is number seven. So Moro is the winner. So he is the recipient of the other Stripe Action sticker. So those are our winners for tonight. And you know what's going to happen? What we're going to have to do is, because to make this fair, because I'm, I'm going to start getting like, you know, I'm sure uh, LG's probably going to, you know, hunt me down or something, is we're going to have to have like a qualification. Like if you won the week before or the one last time, if we're doing the same kind of thing, we may have to like, uh, you know, disqualify you from, a, from another drawing. I don't know. Maybe that's probably not really fair. But anyway, so guys, those are the guys that, that won. Travis, Josh, Timothy Wolf. Let me get your, actually get your names right here. So Josh Abib. Uh, Travis, what is Travis' last name? Travis Winston, Timothy Wolf, and Moro, what is your last name, Moro? Moro Marcelo, you have to, for you to win, for you to get this, you must send me an email. You must email me your address to here. Ron at ron .com. Email me the address where you want the product, the product sent to. <laughs> LG, you gotta be positive, man. Um, send me an email with the address, with your name and the address of where you want the product sent to. 
I will get those stickers ordered and I will get them out to you. I'll actually do that tonight once the live stream is over. I'll get them ordered, get them sent out to you guys. I will tell you, it takes a while for them to ship. Like, um, uh, the Teespring is a little bit slow, especially when it comes to the stickers, but I'm going to order them tonight once the live stream is over and I'm going to get them out to you guys. So just, just so you know, I'm going to get, I'm going to get that, I'm going to get that done. Uh, so make sure you send me your name, the address where you want it sent to, and uh, obviously I'll have your email address because you're going to email it to me. You have to send it to ron at ron-henry.com, so I'll look out, for, look out for those tonight. Well, guys, I'm trying to think, are there any other questions? Okay, uh, let's see. We have a question here before we close out. I don't want to leave anybody any questions unanswered. One here from Gary Gale. He says, hey, Ron, how frequently would you use a micro booster on your lawn like the product from Simple Lawn Solutions. Um, so if you're doing it to try and get that, that nice green up, like again, kind of like in uh, what we were talking about earlier in the live stream as far as you're trying to get ready for the 4th of July or get some get get, a, get your lawns looking really nice for some event, um, typically uh, a few days before. So like, you know, three to seven days prior to that to that event is when I would do it. So you show it's going to be really begin to pop. Really those products... Um, you don't want to be applying them unless there's a need for it. So, you know, get a soil test done. And if you have like an iron deficiency or a zinc deficiency or a manganese deficiency, like it's a great product that you can use to help amend those problems, help fix those problems. But it's not something that I would necessarily put down every single month uh, unless there's actually a real need, a reason to do it. I mean, I guess you could, but um, like anything else, really, you don't want to overdo it on even the micronutrients, even though they're not as critical to the to your turf grass as like the macros, you don't want to overdo it with those um, either. So uh, hope that, hope that helps. <laughs> hope that helps. Um, and guys, I, 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 I'm sorry that you guys, the ones that didn't win, I try to make it as, I did four stickers tonight, man. That's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good for like 12 people. That's, that's a really good, that's a really good ratio. I try to make it as good as possible for everybody. And I asked a pretty soft, I thought a pretty softball question. I'm going to have to to step up. Static Alpha, you didn't chime in, man. You didn't put your you didn't put your your thing in. You know what? Okay, you know what? This is it. I'm gonna do one more. This is it. I'm gonna do one more. We're gonna add static to it. Let me see who do we who do we who won? We did Moro. We're gonna take Moro out. And someone else won. So I took him out and I took Tim out. So now we've got I'm gonna give you guys one last chance. This is it. I mean, I've said it before, but I really need this time. Last chance. So and we've got LG, uh, we've got Chris, we have Dean, Rick, Edward, Cedric, Nice AZ, and Static. So we have eight people in there, okay? So I'm going to reduce, I'm going to go back to the, uh, the window here. We're going to reduce it from nine to eight. And this is the last drawing, so fingers crossed. This is your last chance. And here we go, drawing now generate and the number is six <laughs> so the winner sorry lg lg so lg was one chris was two dean was three rick was four edward was uh five uh robert was six i think let me make sure lg chris dean rick edward robert so robert if you are here if you're still here robert are you here you got to chime in you have to let me know you're you're here um, uh, definitely a Robert, Robert Ruffin, definitely send me an email to this email address, uh, ron at ron-henry.com. Send me an email address with your name and the address you want the, you want the sticker, <laughs> you want the sticker mailed to. LG, don't do that. Do not, do not uh, go walk into traffic because I need you around to help answer some of these questions sometimes. Whenever, you know, you're, you're always the guy that comes through in the clutch. So do not go walk into, into uh, traffic. Uh, don't do that. Because you're eventually going to win. If you stick around long enough, you are, you are going to win. So, Robert, um, also send me an email with your email address. I'm going to make a note here of, um, of that. And I will get those stickers um, sent out. I will get the order in tonight and get those mailed out to you guys. And uh, we will go from there. So definitely just send me, yeah, Robert Reffern, just send me an email. Send me an email with, with, uh, with your address and your name and where you want it to go to. Well, guys, I hope you guys found this useful. I think I answered everyone's questions. I also cleared up some of um, some of the misconceptions around like replacing all your fertilization with liquid fertilization. That is that was not my intention in the video that I posted uh, earlier today. Li literally, the point of that video was to show that carbon products can be economical to apply once you do the calculus of coverage 
versus what it, what the actual product costs. That was the whole point. So thank you guys for keeping me honest and for chiming in and for watching the content. A cool season question next time, uh, Rick. Okay, yeah, yeah, definitely, man. Throw him, throw me a cool. I'll, I will. I'll come up with a cool season question. Uh, I guess I'll have to think of a good one. I may have to go. I may have to ask. Um, Ryan Knorr or uh, or Connor, one of those guys. Let's go look at their channel and find something kind of obscure since I don't know anything about about it. Let me see. No, um, Edward, no, you were you were um, number five. Well, LG, Chris, Dean, Rick, Edward, you were number five. You were number five, not number six. Cedric, was, um, Robert was number six, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, well, cool, guys. Uh, but here, always to, uh, consider chiming in next week. We can see about uh, about getting uh, doing another giveaway. So remember, next week there is not going to be a give. There's not going to be a giveaway because there's not going to be a live stream. Uh, the next live stream will be two weekends, two weeks from now. So uh, if today is the 16th, the next live stream will be uh, today. This month is not uh, September. It's October. So it'll be on the 30th. It'll be the day before Halloween. So on. Uh, October 30th will be the next live stream the next Friday night. So I will get a week off and you guys will get a week from not hearing me yep. And uh, look out for that video on Monday. Again, the one that, where I talk about uh, the mower. I show you guys uh, like how I took the mower apart and uh, you know found out that the belt is what broke on my mower. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy that. So continue watching the content. If you guys are not yet a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Please share the content with anyone that you think could benefit from it. And uh, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching, for hanging out with me this evening. I will see you guys next time. Talk to you guys in two weeks. Have an amazing weekend.